Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Modus Super Series. It's week nine here at the Live Lounge. And if you weren't with us last week, well, you missed quite a thrilling week of action. The first nine data to be hit on this stage behind me. The first ever three-way nine dart shootout. And of course, Conan Whitehead became the eighth player to book his spot in Champions Week. To discuss that and so much more, we have Chris Murphy alongside me. Chris, you were here for the entire week, four finals night. Just tell us how thrilling, but how nerve-wracking that nine dart shootout was. Yeah, it was the most incredible. Well, the whole week was dramatic, and it was really fitting that it happened on that week. But the nine dart shootout itself, that just took twists and turns like the whole week did as well. So we saw um, Andy Hamilton incorporate a shot in the 25 to finish one point ahead of Lee Shewan who dropped out. Ryan Finesse was behind early and he hit a 180 in there as well. So yeah, the nine dart shootout just encapsulated what was the most dramatic week that we've ever had here at the Super Series or in its previous geysers. Yeah, and we're going to take a little look at that now. I think we're going to pick it up from Ryan Furness, his, his second visit to the board. And it all, it all depends, doesn't it, on you know, where you're positioned in that shootout because he won the ball, he opted to go third, so he knew who was going mm. ahead of him. That 180 to, to kind of secure his, his place in the standings, it was really important. Yeah, it was. It was massive. I think he went off 58, and uh, Henry in commentary said it has to be a minimum 140. The first dart goes in, the second one goes in. And then when the third goes and he probably thinks he's home and dry, he'd gone from being behind in the shootout to taking the lead. At least Sean was steady enough, um, you know, a couple of tons before he had that loose visit. Still found a treble every single turn and ended up losing because we'll see now Andy Hamilton, after a loose start himself, uses all his experience to throw at the bullseye 25 segment uh, and win against Shewan by one point. Quite a, a remarkable here you see in the one. So he now knows that he's got to get 45 points with the next couple of darts, finds a 25 and lets out that hammer roar. And if you're Lee Shewan at that point, you're kind of starting to think, aren't you, that the race is run because Ryan had been throwing really well. He looked really solid. I know you said he got off with that poor visit, but he seemed to be keeping his composure there with that second dart, doing enough yeah. to secure his place. It really, really was a dramatic evening. And then Conan Whitehead going on to win the evening. You spoke to him afterwards as well, didn't you? How was he? Yeah, well, he'd won his last three matches just to get through, and he'd had to win them just to get through. And then similarly, he lost his first match on finals night as well and he kept saying to Paul Nicholson don't worry I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it um, and I think maybe not being involved in the nine dart shootout might have worked in his favor a little bit he could relax a bit in the back room won the semi and the final both convincingly and he just seemed like a man who just kind of kept believing himself and, and it came out in his darts in the in the semis and the final absolutely and we're gonna see that winning moment from Conan Whitehead in a moment I think it's coming up here yes it is this is the final dart for the match for the £5,000 prize as well. It really is a lot of money that these players are playing for. And of course, he's booked his place in Champions Week. We've already got eight players secured in that week now. And I just want to talk through a bit about that. We're going to have the graphic of the players who are involved in that already. Who's impressed you the most of those eight players that are through? Yeah, well, of the players that were here, I think, I mean, Conan himself um, was fantastic in the in coming back from the dead. I thought Graham Usher, I really like watching Graham Usher. Um, but some of the players haven't actually played on this stage yet, so their first outing will be at Champions Week, which will be interesting because Robert Owen, who got through in week one, he's won the most matches out of anybody that's played in this concept, but he's never done it on that stage. We don't know what he'll be like. I think it's shaping up to be very exciting, very interesting. Um, but for me, I think Graham Usher's a man. He's had a nine data himself as well. Um, it was disappointing maybe not to get Conor Heenan through. Conan won't thank me for saying <laughs> that because he was a star of the week yeah. apart from, you know, had a nine data himself, 115 average. But it's going to be competitive and uh, it's so brutal, isn't it, that only one player goes through now. Absolutely. And I think Kieran Tian as well, he was really impressive. And he's a, he's a player who's got such great ambitions in this sport. You know, I spoke to him before we came here to Portsmouth and he was saying, I want to be world champion. He's using this to elevate his career, as are many players we've got in action this evening and throughout this week. We're going to take a look at the players who are involved. You've got the likes of Danny Lauby, fresh off the back of a superb run on the Challenge Tour this weekend. Of course, Challenge Tour event 19. He made it all the way through to the final. A number of names in there. Sebastian 
but uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's easier for me to it's say. Bielewetski <laughs> in there as well. You know, we've seen him have some great runs at the UK Open. He had a nine data, which of course we didn't get to see on the televised boards, but it did happen. And then that run to the quarterfinal. Nathan Gavan as well. Who's impressing you this week? Do you think? Yeah, in this group, it's going to be really, really tight. One of the best group pairs I think we've we've had for a while. Um, but later in the week, we've got, you know, more established players in this format, like Colin Osborne, uh, who's won a major title. Scott Williams, who's won a record-breaking four Challenge Tours in one year, having picked one up at the weekend. So it is going to be really interesting. And I do think that Seb, as I'm going to call him, <laughs> is uh, one player to watch out for in Group A. Absolutely. I'm going to take that one. I'm <laughs> going to take that bit of advice on board. Let's get into the action, shall we? First up, we do have Danny Lauby up against Jamie Keelan, and it is going to be in the company of Henry Deacon and this man who's going to hot foot it down to the commentary box. Thank you very much, Abby. After a week which featured a nine dart finish and a nine dart shootout, perhaps it's appropriate that we are kicking off week nine here at the Moda Super Series. And we really do have an international field and an international flavour towards our week this week here at the Super Series. For only the second time in the history of this competition, do we have six different nationalities represented in Group A? We see the American Danny Lelby on your screen now, the talented left-hander up against a Jamie Kelling, the one English player in the group in Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. We will then see Stefan Belmont of Switzerland, Nathan Gervin of Scotland, Alex Small of Wales and the Pole, Sebastian Biowetsky. They are to come, but our full focus is on the informed Danny Lauby, a man who made a Challenge Tour final at the weekend, as the guys in the studio rightly alluded like to. Up against Jamie players. Kelling, a player which we've become accustomed to seeing here in the old room in Southampton, now in Portsmouth in the Super Series. One of the new kids on the hockey this back in 2008. Paul Hinks is the man in the middle and gets week nine of this process underway. A very good evening to you, wherever you are tuning in to us around the world on YouTube. Don't forget as well to give us a subscribe. And we'll have plenty of content 60. as the week goes on. And I'm happy to say Chris Murphy has made that run from the studio to the commentary box i'll let him grab his 59. breath because that is quite some run isn't it i thought you were letting me grab my breath, no, hey, breath. okay yeah but excited for this henry after last week it was i mean uh, as i was saying with abby up there it was such a dramatic week one of the most incredible weeks we've had not just in the super series one but in the live league series. before it and i think we've got the players to rival it Indeed we do. I was mentioning before he came into the booth, six players from six different nationalities. And the second time we've seen it in Group A, real international field this week. But it is the Englishman well, Kelling who's looking to get off to the better start. Leaves 81 after 12 against the darts. But well, that's some response from Lau B, the first match of the one. week. He doesn't mess about, does he? Danny Lauby, I thought he might have finished the first leg by the time I got down here. 25, Danny Rukar, 30. Well, he could get the first leg done. In a matter of instance, he does leg. so. And that is a hold of throw as well. So Lauby gets the week up and running with the perfect start for him. Although Kelling will feel as if he should have taken that first one. He was in command of it. For long like periods. First, game on. Well, you'll be thinking is at least it was only with Lauby's throw. He wasn't broken in that 100. opener. A mind of how the format works here if you are new to us here at the Super Series. We play over six days. We'll be returning tomorrow and Wednesday morning from 9.30. Then Thursday, Friday morning from 9.30. We're a double session in Group B. Group A will take place over the next three days. The winner will qualify for Saturday's finals. One and the second, third, fourth place, sorry, second and third place player will make it through to Group B, which will take place 100. on Thursday and Friday nights. Three from five will progress to the sixth man field on Saturday. Four, fifth and sixth will have the opportunity to qualify through Group B, where two from six will qualify through. I love this stuff from Jamie Kelling, chucking his first max of the week. 140, Jamie got 81. We'll have to try and rescue this now. He was looking for a treble 18. It's a couple of loose starts, and as quick as a flash, 15. Danny Lauby could Danny find himself 2 0 up here. Treble 17, bullseye. 
96. Jim Wilcraft, 66. Well, it goes underneath into the 25, so Kelling has an opportunity to return for 66. Double 18. James His first start line. at double, and Jimmy it is Kelling. converted, and we are level at one apiece. Lelby's had opportunities to win both of the opening legs, won the first, couldn't convert the ball in the 1-2-1 one, one in the second, and so level we are at one apiece. They'd like Danny to throw first, game on. Well, Danny Lowby's a, a very interesting character, isn't he, 96. Henry? A, a player that's followed in his father's footsteps in playing at the World Championship. He also works as a, a music teacher away from the sport. Drums and 29. guitars and plays in bands. I bet his bedroom's as noisy as yours, Henry. What are the I wonder if there's a spot for a singer or backup artist in the band. Oh, you'd, be a, uh, you'd be a front man, Henry. Don't put yourself down. 140. If he wants to sell tickets, I'd advise against it. He's heard 41. the sweet tone of the Paul Hinks. 180. Already three times in this opening match. 135. Oh, we what do you make of Jamie Kenning? Because we've seen some good stuff from him. He's made finals here. At the previous Lively, but perhaps we see the best of him and perhaps the B game isn't always there. Probably a fair assessment, yeah. And I think we're seeing 100. in Daniel this Carl, match, the A game, the problem is we're seeing that from Lauby as well. So Kelling has to win the games in which he plays well Jamie for me to have a chance of going through. There are other players that do have better B and C games in the field. 77, Danny Rebar, 36. That shouldn't really matter, even if he comes back, he'll be throwing a double, line. but he doesn't Danny come Lowby. back. 2-0 to Danny Lowby. 2-1 to Danny Lowby, however, rather. I forgot how to commentate, Henry, after a week of presenting. Don't say it. Both like Jamie to throw first. Game on. Averaging 98 and a half, Lowby. 95 average for Kelling, and two out of four on the checkouts for the American. 60. I just wonder how the players will adapt to the scenario. Obviously, this week a bit different to the usual weeks where they're playing in the evening, which will suit them on the Monday, but then having to then finish today and then go straight into a morning session 40. tomorrow. So I suppose for the, for the players, the way they'd usually climb the ties themselves towards this championship, they're going to have to do something a bit different this time out. Yeah, it's, it is interesting, isn't it? Uh, a little change like this. I, I mean, I guess this sort of time is a, a time they'll be more used 46. to playing, the majority of them. Um, so maybe we'll see some some potentially record-breaking tungsten tossing in Group A as far as that group is concerned. Uh, but then how to do it again just a few hours later. That will be interesting. 85. Danny Ricard, 150. I'll be hoping that Lauby can replicate these sorts of standards throughout the day because he's kicked off perfectly. The average is still above the ton, requiring 52 after 12 to break the killing throw and open up a 3-1 lead and throw for the opening game of the day. 100. Or shall I say Daniel evening? 52. Top saw it. And the there it is. Danny Lauby gets Lowby. that break and he is one away from the opening rubber of the day here at the Super Series. He leads by three legs to one and he has the honour. To get the first two points of like Group Danny A. First, game on. Come on then, Henry. You've been around with us here at the Super Series long 96. enough now to be put on the spot. Who are you expecting to get through from the six in this group? For me, it's between Lauby and Gervin. I think their levels over the course 60. of 15 games perhaps will be just a little bit more than the others. I think we know what Bioetsky can do. But again, I think he's Eight unproven one. over this sort of format. Lauby's been here before, back end of last year. Nathan Gervin's become a regular in this format. And I think it's, for the debutants, I think it's quite hard to, to set one a level of expectation 14. over the first three days. We saw it last week with Moreno Blom. Struggled initially to get into one his stride. Well, Danny Lauby eight. isn't struggling to get into his stride as he leads 1-4-4 after 9 for the match, averaging 103.06, his third max of the match. But... Maybe judge the Davidsons at the Daniel end of the Carl, week. 
Well, he's not going to add a, a supersized checkout. 100. If he is to win the match in this leg. Ty's checkout will remain 52, but he hasn't needed them, has he? Such has been the superiority of his scoring. Daniel Ocar, 44. Tops. Double 10. 34. That's two mismatch darts for Danny Lauby. But he is going to return for double five. But under how much pressure? I'd just stay there. 139. You know. Danny Ocar, 10. Just let Paul Hinks put him off with the 180 call. But it's double two to Getting seal the deal. The match. And Danny, Danny does the business. Lauby lands the first blow in Group A. A convincing 4-1 victory against Jamie Kelling. The American ace with a very, very good performance. A statement of intent, perhaps. Four out of nine on the checkouts. A high of 52, as we said, the scoring was so good. He didn't need anything bigger than that. Three maximums in there as well. A very strong start for Danny Lauby.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We're off to a superb start to this evening's session with Danny Lauby registering a 4-1 victory over Jamie Kelling. There you can see the stats on the screen. Lauby averaging just shy of 97, 3-1-80s in that match. His scoring really was a crucial part of his game. His finishing, not too bad either in that one. Four out of nine on the outer ring but next up we've got another belting clash for you as Stefan Belmont takes on Nathan Gervan. Nathan of course with much experience in the Modus Super Series already a sublime young talent who many are tipping to do wonderful things in this game. Stefan making his debut in the Modus Super Series as are two other players this week of course. So Let's get the action underway for the second match of the evening, shall we? In the company of Henry Deacon and first, Chris Murphy. Yeah, thanks, Abby. Here we go then with Switzerland's Stefan Belmont taking on Nathan Gervin of Scotland. And as Abby said, he is expected to do wonderful things. He's already doing wonderful things. A challenge to a title win, a nine data in a Players' Championship event for a 19-year-old. Superb stuff. And speaking of doing wonderful things, somebody is doing fantastic things in the commentary box, but that's enough about me. Evening, Henry. Hey, right, Murph. What are you expecting from this one, then? I'm expecting a bit of quality. Nathan Gervin, as we know, has pulled up some real trees here at the Super Series. Has a running average in this competition of 87.54. And when you consider the vast amount of matches that he's played in this competition that says quite something about his pedigree and his ability that average coming from a combined 78 matches in this competition that says how good he is in this format best of seven seems to suit him but these two have had a really important meeting in the past which was over best of nine and it was stefan belmont who was the victor in that meeting it was a challenge tour semi-final earlier on this year and the significance of it was Belmont then went on to win that competition. So there is history between these two. 100. Yeah, it's something we are seeing a lot, isn't it? Challenge two are winners doing well on the Super Series and vice versa. Many players heading off to Challenge two tournaments filled with confidence after playing in these 60. events. We saw Scott Williams, of course, win a, a record-breaking fourth Challenge two title in a single year. 140. Be a, a slightly different taste in this one. And Stefan Belmont. 59. He's a more deliberate player. But they do play at a kind of similar speed, don't they, the pair of them? So, nice should one. suit each other. It's what you'd probably call medium pace, where it's not quick, but at the same time, it's not methodically slow. 36. Nathan O'Carr, 170. It's a bit of a struggling start from the Swiss star. Hasn't found a treble other than a treble five in his first dozen darts. 94. He may find himself a breakdown in next to no time Nathan at all. Gervin back for 96 after 12. We'll stay there. We could go across for double 18. For double top. Game the double the double to Nathan open up Gilman. your campaign with a breaker throw. It's not a bad way to start, is it, Nathan? Starting as he means to go on. The breaker throw leading the Super Swiss by a leg to nil. Second leg, Nathan, to throw first. Game on. Yeah, just one player in that opening leg. Belmont has not settled at all. One of... What we are seeing in this group, Piowetsky and Alex Small, the, the kind of unknown quantity in this group, young Welsh player. 93. But Belmont has played on big stages before. I've seen him at the World Cup. Deciding to switch here. 97. And 
doing so sensibly. The 17 route made more sense than the 19s on that occasion. Well, I mentioned 41. in the first game how difficult it can be for debutants here adapting to this new format. And Stefan, perhaps in that quandary at 16. this present moment in time, and maybe playing an experienced player like Nathan doesn't help. So the two that play in match three may actually think they got a distinct advantage over Stefan because they're both going to work it out at the same time. 140. I do wonder if there is a, a slight feeling that everybody's a debutant since we've moved to become the Moda Super Series. We're playing in a behind-closed-doors room in our previous venue in Southampton, but here at the new all-singing, all-dancing Moda's Live Lounge, it is a different 16. feeling Nathan for everybody. Brown, Wall, and the example I would cite is Kieran Tian, who struggled in Group A a couple of weeks ago, but then ended up winning the week. Double 16. He's Gerben is not struggling line. to settle Nathan in. Gerben. That's for sure. What a start to this match for him. Checkouts of 96 and 112 to start of his campaign. An average bang on the tongue, pretty much, They're for like the talented young first. Scotsman. And Bellman has got some work to do here. That'll help. 140. Yeah, you think he needed that, and he needed it in this leg, just to give himself a little bit of a buffer for once. After a really slow, 100. lethargic start. As you mentioned, he just needs a leg where Nathan doesn't apply any pressure. He needs him really to kind of have an off leg with throw just 100. to kind of get him into it because he's been completely outscored. He's yet to have a dart double in this match. Yeah, needs to get on a Swiss roll. 100. He? Beat me to it, Murph. I'd like to say I'm here all week, but I'm not, actually. We've got a uh, rather esteemed company later in the week, but we'll leave that big reveal until they are here. Talking about esteemed company, Nathan Gerben is putting himself in those sorts of brackets and does so with darts like that. Belmont now 164. This would be some way to ignite the spark at the start of your Super Series campaign. 96. Nathan Rukar won. Well, if Gerben takes this out, Belmont might be minded just to shake hands and walk off the stage. Treble 20. And the ball. Oh, it wasn't far away. Whistle taps the wire. But it puts pressure on this. It's an opportunity, quite simply put, he's going to have to take. So 16 or 8. Double 16. Game shot Big dart. And he was up to the task. Brings it back to 2 1 with. Gervin poised for the double breaker throw and a 3 0 lead. Yeah, showed a bit of defiance there, didn't he, Stefan Belmont? Gervin averaging like Nathan to throw 105.57 after three legs in this match. And that's 21 points higher than 18. his opponent. Oh, he's unlucky there. Maybe Belmont's got his friend to stand behind the ball with a hammer. Would be one way to stop Nathan Gervin in this form. I thought Andy went home 96. on Saturday. Well, Andy Hamilton was actually a big beneficiary of a bounce out on Saturday night, wasn't he? A dart dangling. 41. 180 left in the first match of the night. And he hit treble 20, treble 20. The next one was heading for treble 20, but hit the darts in it. And fortunately, what didn't go in, didn't do that. And won his match. And that was the first step towards that history making nine dart shootout. Indeed it was. You can view that after we're done here on our social media feeds. You can follow us as at MSS Darts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And you can also subscribe to the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Please do. One Plenty of content across there between sessions. Yeah, this, these live sessions going out on that channel as well. And those of you who have been watching on the online darts channel, that will be just shown on the Modus Super Series channel in due course, so make sure you're subscribing and turn on your notifications. 45, Nathan Ocar, 112. 112 is the checkout that Gervin has already checked out in this match. And Bellman might be inclined to turn off and not watch 
But Gurman couldn't repeat the feat. And so Belmont is back for 2 2, which, when Gurman was racing away into a 2 0 lead, looked very unlikely. But credit to Belmont here because he's just stuck in there and is waiting for the opportunities to present itself. That was a 13 dart leg. So credit to him for sticking in there and taking full advantage. Gurban has had darts at every at double in every single leg in this match. Could have won it 4-0 already. You may notice as well, Henry, there, he changed the tact, the route that he took out the 112 with earlier on. 92. Yeah, and, and I just wonder whether the way that the, the first dart at treble stood up obscured his view of the doubles bed. It was almost as if he had to pick a side, left or right. The middle of it was completely school because his darts stand up to attention. See him now having to switch to ensure 96. that he has the best chance of hitting a treble. Belmont a bit more stubborn in that department. I mean, that's a perfect dart. Won't be able to show as an example in this visit because they're 100. absolutely plumb. But if his dart goes below the treble, often he'll try and get past it when maybe switching to an open bed would be a better option. 60. Well, he'll definitely want to stay up here on 220. And this would be for, without to suspect, an unlikely turnaround at 2-0. And he's going about his business the beautifully. Way? The reason it would be so unlikely is because Gervin's level hasn't dropped an awful lot. 59. Before that visit, so he was still averaging in three figures. He'd had darts at double in every leg. He won't get darts in this leg. Being shown the fifth he doesn't, leg. and Step suddenly he finds himself behind. What a tungsten turnaround this could be. And Nathan Gervin, from a position of authority, remember he had a dart for the double break and a 3 0 lead, is now throwing Six leg to stay to in the Game contest. On. Speaking of tungsten turnarounds, Henry, what was the most remarkable one for you? I know we saw Moreno Blom come back and qualify from Group C as an 80 to 1 outsider on the second day. We saw Conan Whitehead come from the bottom to the top of Group B and go on and win the title. There were just so many things. Even Scott Walters leading, having won all of his matches, and then almost unbelievably losing all of his matches the following day. What was the one that really 90. caught your attention? Because there were a few last week. There was. You, you know, there's a phrase that there's, there's weeks that feel like decades and decades that feel like weeks. And last week kind of felt like the sort of week where everything happened. 60. But I, I, just from a perspective of, we went on a journey with him last week. I like the Moreno blown turnaround. And then he went on to play the British Open yesterday. And he had some success in that. Went to the latter stages of it. Just missed out on the stage final. And I, and I just think as the week went on, he, and he said to me after the, final on Saturday. He's using this as work experience, as 43. something just to get his game in shape and to learn a lot about the stage game and, and playing against these types of players. And it, it was put to good use at the British Open. Those three darts almost put to perfect use as Gervin leaves 95 after 12. Yeah, a long way behind. Needs to fill this up to leave a finish. One and Julie the delivers. Nathan O'Brien, 95. It's his third of the match. Incredibly. It's going to leave 70. the ball for Gervin. So this is for the match, Murph. Now Belmont would love to leave the ball at the end of this combo. He's not going to do it. Gervin having opted to go that route and opted Nathan to go for the ball 25. has to waste a dart to get to double here. Many in that spot with their opponent on 161 would have Trying to leave a double. Flag, Nathan Gervin. But Gervin only needed one dart, and it does go down to a seventh and deciding leg. Do you think that goes down to the situation in the game? Perhaps if it was in the middle of the match, he may have thought seventh about final leg, posing the first, question to Stefan, but because he was on the 1 6 1 to win it, he had to go for the ball no matter the scenario. Um, no, actually. I think on a shot one like 1 6 1, the percentage of times a player's going to take that out is probably somewhere between 5 and 10%. Uh, 100. Then again, you know, he, he took the shot out as soon as he came back. Some players would always go that route anyway, regardless whether they're opponent on a finish or not. In fact, those that watched the, the World Series of Darts final would have seen Gerwin Price 42. and 
Dirk van Dijvenbode employ opposite tactics themselves and, and both proving to be right. 13. Unlucky for some. And at the worst time for Gervin. And look at how Belmont has made a charge here. 140. His timing in this match has been impeccable. And also 60. That is the difference. It looked like he was running out of time, didn't it? When he trailed 2 0, he survived darts to go 3 0 behind. Well, a, a big one would leave the big fish. 65. You are teasing. Needs the lot. 125. And so Belmont is now going to get six for the match to win on debut at the Super Series. Triple 18 for Tops. 94 left. Tops. To seal it for Stefan Belmont, who wins on his debut here at the Modus Super Series. He beats Nathan Gervin by four legs to three. Gervin missed a dart to go 3 0 up in that match. He was punished royally by Belmont, who seals the victory in a last leg decider of an average of 95.6. We're going to take a short break and we are going to see two debutants go toe to toe on the Super Series hockey. It's Alex Small, it's Sebastian Biowetsky, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes' time.
Hello, good evening, and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. What a fantastic turnaround victory we have just witnessed from Switzerland, Stefan Belmont. A fantastic 4-3 victory after Nathan Girvan took the first two legs with a 96 finish with a double-double on 18s and tops, and then f following that up with a 112 outshot. Stefan Belmont then upped his level with three 180s, five scores of 140 plus and then was four out of six on the doubles after Nathan Gervin had given him no look at the outer ring in the opening two legs. Up next for you, we've got two debutants taking part in the Modus Super Series as Sebastian Bowetsky takes on Alex Small from Wales, of course. No bias here, though, of course. Of course, Bowetsky is a player you may know very well. He hit a nine data at the UK Open in 2021 before a run to the quarterfinal of the same tournament earlier this year. Alex Small taking part in this event for the first time. Let's see who adapts to this stage the quickest in the company of Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Abby. And it is a welcome debut to one of the hottest properties in the world of darts, Sebastian Biowetsky, the talented young Pole. There's a lot of eyes, ears and attention on him throughout the course of this week. But Alex Small is another player who is making his mark this year. As we see the 18-year-old from Lodz in Poland, nicknamed Bolt, quarter finalist at the UK Open early on this year. Up against the 24-year-old Alex Small from Wattsville in Wales. And he is the champion of champions in 2022. And that is one of the hardest tournaments like in the world first. of darts to win. Game Best on. of three. You have to win a pub qualifier to get there first. It's effectively the old news of the world format. 134. Yeah, Bobby George, one of the masters of that. It looks like I've never seen Alex Small play in the flesh before. And it looks like we've got another... Quick fire player. 121. We're going to have Alex Small and Danny Lauby play later on, Henry. We're going to have to commentate like it's a horse race. Is David Croft available? What do you make of 61. Sebastian? I know you've seen him about obviously, the UK Open and things like that. Where do you think he's seen and could potentially be? Or are we being a bit harsh to ask that question so early on? 60. Well, yeah, it's different. You never know when a darts player is going to peak, do you? Some do it later in their career, but he's shown some signs early on. A bit of a surprise 93. to me that Sebastian's not yet earned himself that PDC Tour card. I think he's certainly capable of coming through that, that European qualifying skill. Maybe next year will be the year. But I think that the one thing Alec Rukal, he needs to bring to his game is consistency. And I think probably most players do. Kevin Painter put it bluntly in a tweet, didn't he? Consistently Rukal, inconsistent last week. And I think many a dart player will feel like that. But this would be a way to arrive at the Super Series. Not going to happen. 99, Alec Rukal, 36. Well, I've been speaking about Bielwetski for the entirety of the first leg. You did ask me about him. Yeah, you the but it's Alex play. Small that's Alex going Moore. to win it. He opens up his campaign at the Super Series, leading 1-0, but it is Bielewski with the throw in leg two. Yeah, one of uh, Second leg, Sebastian a few Dutour players first. Game on. coming out of Poland now. Obviously, Krzysztof Ratajski, the one that everybody would think about. Kind of a, a trailblazer for darts over one there, but 40. Sebastian Steyer, who has played at at this tournament before. One of the yeah, I don't think Small likes us talking about his opponent, does he, Henry? I think every time we do, he does something special. And he's open with the 180 in leg two. 60. Can he follow up? No. That was oh, always yeah. going to be a big ask after last week. But going back to Bielecki in Poland, are you surprised we haven't seen more tournament play? out there it's it's a hotbed it's got a lot of emerging talents coming through yeah and i think there are areas that really would suit darts tournaments i don't think it will be long before we see 97 the pdc perhaps put a european tour event out there 
but it's from Poland to Portsmouth to Biowetski. Looking to make a name for himself here at the Super Series, but Small is the one doing that in this match so far. Excellent setup shot. Not just his throw, but the way he's playing. He's going through this match at a rate of knots, and you sense that Biowetski is going to have to take out this 118. This is just for a hold. And it goes up high, 20. and that's now the target that Small wants to open up a 2 0 lead. A break of throw. Game shot on the second yeah, leg. Well Alex, Small. Alex Small. One of the things with fast players is that it's all well and good throwing at the same target, but when you have to move around the board, that's when you can come a cropper. But really did Looks well like to I make like that to adjustment. First. Decent marker on the double 10 and then in 2 0. Told you they've got to throw the at the same target. Three of the best for Alex Small. Average now 98 and a half following his second maximum of the match. Yeah, and both 96. of them to open legs, so you're already putting your opponent under enormous pressure. 140. And of course, he has won on a stage. When you win the Champion of Champions, you're playing on a stage. It was at the depot centre. In Cardiff, uh, probably the best part of 800-900 people in the auditorium. Most of the players who were eliminated from the competition, plus some spectators. So, 57. Even though it was a best of three format, he knows what it's like to win on the big stage in front of a crowd. Yeah, and he was a bit of a surprise name, wasn't he? With other players, ones that have been here at the Super Series, would have been big favourites when he got to the quarters and semi-final stage. The likes of Robert Owen, for example, his fellow Welshman. Oh, this is absolutely Game divine darting Alex from Alex Small, who might have a big future in the game. A dozen dart leg, a one, two, four checkout. You see it maximums in each of the last two. Sebastian to throw first. And Game we on. were at the beginning quite rightly waxing lyrical about this man. But by the end of it, we've got no choice, 43. no option, but to lavish purple pros upon Alex Small. What Who needs words when you can watch his actions? Three on the spin. Opening 180s. Taylor-esque. 64. That's what he used to do, didn't he? The old goat. Just pile the pressure on from 60. the off. And your opponent is just playing like that. Carrying a bag full of coal for the rest of the match. For the rest of each leg. That was me every Christmas, Murph. 125. It must have been good that year. <laughs> well, he's certainly been good 100. here. Are you going to revise your predictions for, for this group, having witnessed the first three matches? Splinters, anyone? 59. Well, this would be to seal some win. He is going to come back with Biowetsky back on 210. 89. But this has been some debut performance from Alex Small. One out of them four. He comes back. Class 72. 72. Treble 12 the target. Now 20. Now 40. 52. Sebastian will class 70. Probably the side you didn't intend to go there. And Biowetsky does have an opportunity to avoid a debut whitewash. It's only a second dart to double, but it goes, and it gives Wesley. itself some kind of hope. But I may extinguish a little bit of hope he has now, because it is Small who has the darts now to seal a 4-1 victory. Like to well, we know what it'll open with. Treble 20, treble 20, treble 20. I didn't fancy it, thought it was double start. 140. Press reset, though, with a second dart. That's what Biowetsi can have to do 99. from here. One hundred and thirty-four. You spoke earlier, Henry, about the, the, the difference in this particular group pl playing in the evening and then the morning tomorrow. I guess if somebody plays 100. pretty well, they'll want to jump out of bed and come back and throw darts. But whoever's struggling with four or five losses is going to want to wait and 
sleep properly and start again, really, aren't they? So it could be advantageous for some players. I mean, if Alex Small carries on playing like this, he wish he could just play straight through his first 10 games tonight. The fish to finish, not this time. 60. But I think the first day carries more weight this week because of the changeover into Tuesday compared to other weeks. Mentally, you're going to feel so much different when you hit the pillow and you wake up first thing tomorrow morning. Alex Small want to feel that winning feeling on debut. He's got one dart at double 16, and that would have been some way to finish it off his second ton plus of the match. Been here before, haven't we? Small misses a dart at double, and Bioweski has 70 to stay in the match. But this time he fails to take 32. out the double 16, and the same target awaits the Welshman. No score. It's always going to be Sebastian tricky after that second 32. dart. Double eight. Game and may the, the Tungsten tie be turning in this match. We always say in this best of seven format here at the Super Series, the game can always hinge and change on one particular like moment. Will on. those three mismatch darts there from Alex Moore be the moment where it all changes? Well, Nathan Gerben will have felt that he should have won 4-0. He had darts to win each of the first four legs of the previous match. 100. Alex Small has missed the opportunity in two legs to win 4 0. Gervin went on to lose. Is something similar happening here? It would be an even bigger comeback. 125. But maybe Biowetsky has just started to awaken a little. 41. And without the, the handicap of his opponent hitting 180s at the start of every leg, I mean, that always helps a little bit, doesn't it? They're plateauing. Alex Moore's plateauing. He's plateauing similar to the level that Biowetsky's played at all game long. And that's affording the pole with opportunities. He's going to get six on 220 to level us up at three apiece. But it would be Small that has the darts and the decider. And it's similar, isn't it, to that previous match. This is kind of what happened. He, even when he lost 140. the first couple of legs he lost, Nathan Gervin, he was still kind of dominant in the scoring. But then suddenly, 45. Belmont was on Sebastian finishers when he was on over 200. That's exactly now what's happened here as Biowetsky looks to take out 80 to make it 3-3. And who would have thought that three minutes ago? 60. Is it all change here in game three? Could it be all change in this leg? Because that changes 20. everything. This double ten has to go now. Game and it does go. Sebastian Biowetsky. Sebastian Biowetsky has worked his way back from the brink. Trailing 3-0. Small does have the insurance policy in his final, back like pocket of having the darts in the decider. Well, the theme of last Final week, 14. Murph, was comebacks in terms of the league table. Is the theme of this week going to be comebacks in matches? Very well 16. might be the case. We do see it roughly once a week in this... 95. In this format where a player comes back from 3-0 behind to win 4-3. Biowetsky is going to have to hit big here to get that opportunity. And you can't hit bigger than that. It has forced Alex Small into bat. To find something big. And he finds just over a century, but he finds a bogey at the same time. Yeah, the slip to treble seven causing that. 125. He'll still probably be the favourite after this visit. Biowetsky on one of those combos that requires a couple of trebles or a couple of doubles if a treble goes in with the first start, which it has. What's the plan? He stayed there. Was it the wisest thing to do? 96. Alec Lucar, 66. He liked the lie. He may not like what's about to happen. Because Alex Small is going... To get one dart at 15. double eight, but it's another mismatched dart for the Welshman. 
Well, had to compose himself there. Almost didn't get any darts. That was very high in the double top bed. Game shot on the match. And that's in the double top lucky. bed. And it is the complete tungsten turnaround. The great escape. Secured by Sebastian Bioetsky. Alex Small came flying out of the blocks. Three maximums. All of them to open legs. A 1-2-4 check out as he raced into a 3-0 lead. But back came Bioetsky to win 4-3. Surviving match darts in the process. And somehow snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. A debut win for him. Up next is one of the other debutants who's won, Stefan Belmont. He's going to take on Jamie Kelling.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. We've just seen Biowetsky complete the comeback over Alex Small. Going into that match, all of the focus and the attention was rightly on the 18-year-old Pole, the sensational star. But it was Alex Small who made the more impressive of starts with a 12 dart leg in there with a 1-2-4 finish to complete it. As you can see the stats on the screen there, a 93.4 average from Alex Small, Sebastian Bielecki averaging just shy of 92. But it was Sebastian who was able to complete the comeback, but I feel that match was more to do with how Alex Small faded in that one. Of course, you heard from Chris Murphy, it was the 180 scoring at the start of legs that put him in such a commanding position in that match early on. But the Polish star was able to ride that storm early on and complete the comeback. Next up, we have another man who's completed a comeback already on this stage this evening in Stefan Belmont. He's taken on Jamie Kelling, who's hoping to get his first points on the board after being brushed aside by Danny Lauby in the opening match of the evening. So let's get this one underway then. Let's rejoin Chris Murphy and Henry Deacon. Yes, thanks, Abby. Welcome back. And um, we have seen a couple of comeback wins early today and Danny Lauby set the standard didn't he set the bar in his 4-1 victory against Jamie Kelling and it looks like Nathan Gervin and Alex Small were going to follow suit but they both wound up losing thanks to comebacks from Biowetsky which Abby's just described and from this man Stefan Belmont who had the slowest start of the lot okay he didn't go as far behind as Biowetsky in his match, but the first couple of legs, he wasn't at the races at all, was he, Henry? No, there was a little bit of nerves starting his Super Series campaign, but first leg as soon Jamie as he settled down, there was some really, really promising signs. Him he on. finished up with an average of 95.69, hit three maximums in the process as well, and actually the standard all so far this evening has been pretty good. The only player Six who three. hasn't hit an average above 90 so far was Jamie Kelling, and that was 86.2 in that 4-1 defeat to Danny Lauby to kick off the show. So for JK, who incredibly is 33 now, it was not long ago he was a part of the new kids on the hockey. He'd be looking to bounce back straight away. Part of a, 45. I suppose, a newly emerging darting hotbed in Andover. Part of a Super League team where we're going to see two of its players this week. Aaron Monk. 60. As well as JK playing in it. We're going to see Aaron Monk on Thursday and Friday, and we look forward to that. Yeah, Monk, of course, also part of that talent oh, no, show that 14. you just uh, referred to. Back in the day. Back before your day, I assume, Henry. Not that young, Chris. Come on. 100. New kids on the microphone here at the Super Series. 100. Already called in a couple of nine darters as well. Flukes they were. Well, tell them you said that. <laughs> 100. Well, Kelly looking at 156 to take the first leg. And no pressure from Belmont, who may be getting a bit of a reputation as a slow starter already here at the Super Series. 100. But slow and steady wins the race, as the old fable goes. This needs to come out of his shell. Well, to finish first, first you have to finish. But it's Kelling who is first to the finishing double. He gets the finishing double. He leads by a leg to nil here against Stefan Belmont. And as Chris rightly alluded to, another sluggish start for Stefan Belmont. Second leg, Stefan to throw first. Game on. He is a bit of a, I'm, I'm looking for the right word here, Henry, because I don't want to be One offensive. He just kind of, everything about him is a little bit slow, isn't it? It's a little bit pedestrian. 100. I feel like flow is something that's, Maybe he's got to adapt to his game a little bit because we actually saw in the second part of that game with Nathan Gervin, he 
he sped up just a tad and it felt like there was a bit more flow towards him. There was a bit more rhythm towards his game. And here it just feels sometimes very forced. It will be interesting to see him play against Lauby and Small later on because he could really Maybe be a rhythm spoiler for them. Uh, by no means saying he's the, the tortoise of Tungsten. There are much slower players than him. But 16. to them, he will seem like he's playing at a snail-like pace because they are rapid. Sixty-five. Well, that single three, he was quite lucky to actually even finish there on the one five eight. I was going to say that he streets in front of Kelling, but that may not be the case apparent now. He wants to stay there to ninety-eight. Stefan Nukar, one hundred and fifty-eight. He lead the one five eight, leaves two hundred. Belmont then first to a finish. Saw this hit last week by Kevin Painter, no less. Sixty. Yeah, missed out on finals night last week, Kevin Painter, but did enjoy watching him. A different beast on a stage, isn't he, Kevin Painter? 60. Stefan Yorkwan, 98. 68. Down we go. Splitting. Double 16. 66. Man with a plan. Jimmy Didn't quite execute it. And this one, 40, would hurt. But it's not going to go. So Belmont will return for the 32. Two levelers up. Stefan Newell 32. This is what he chose to leave. And one of the reasons why is it because it keeps splitting down. 16s becomes 8s. 8s becomes 4s. 4s becomes 2s. But you might not get a go at them. At the moment, we're seeing more splits than Casper Moore on Love Island. Game shot on the second leg, Jamie Kelling. But here's a hit for Kelling, and he opens up a 2-0 lead. And the man from the Alps has got a mountain to climb here, Stefan Belmont. Preferred the second punt to the first, Henry, I must admit. <laughs> so I'd like Jamie to throw first. Game on. Forty-six. I've heard of Love Island, never watched it. To be fair, not a vibe, but... I can see your computer screen. The application form is open. 85. I'll have to get to the gym. 86. Just going back to that decision, you're a, you're a connoisseur of darts, Henry. When on 98 you've hit the treble 20, by splitting, you're only guaranteeing yourself one dart double by going for the double 16. 19 if you miss outside you get two he ended up missing a load anyway but was it the right shot is it the right play is it horses for courses it is horses for courses 16. but i always think perhaps it's a little bit of a confidence thing as well i think he's split because he's not confident going straight for the double 19 because maybe i don't, I don't know maybe he just doesn't feel comfortable 99. going for it straight away maybe being on that stage for the first time. He just wants to play everything safe first up, potentially. But we saw last week the players just went straight forward. They, they attacked their finishes. But I think Stefan, and we saw it in the first game, very pragmatic about how he goes for finishes. He picks his plan before he goes to the board, and he doesn't deviate Jamie away from it. Well, he could find himself behind again here. 58. You have to say, this has been very comfortable for Kelling. Absolutely. Particularly off the back of a 4-1 a defeat in his opener. But Belmont One out hasn't of 40. really been at the races 60. in the first couple of legs once again. And he faces darts to go 3-0 down in the, down the second consecutive Jamie game. But the difference is Jamie Kelling takes that opportunity. And he is a leg away from... Victory and Belmont is going to have to win the lot from here if he is going to All double up to throw first, and keep his 100% winning record in this competition alive. Yeah, sub 80 the average after three legs. 100. Including four darts missed at double 
in the second. Stefan Belmont is killing in the role of hair in this race. And with three debutants, one thing that's going to be really interesting as the session goes on is how they're going to do how they're going to react to their first defeat of the session. I mentioned it last week with Paul Nicholson on commentary. When you play regular competition play, you lose that you lose a game, you go home, you go back to your hotel and you drive back to wherever you wherever you live. Whereas they gotta come back on maybe fifteen, twenty minutes later and try and reverse that fortune. Yeah, although Kelly doesn't live that far away, does he? When he loses, he might be able to nip home. Come back for the next game. Won't be losing this one though. 100. May be famous last words, particularly when we've just seen it. The great escape, but just can't see it in this one. Kelling hasn't done anything spectacular himself, but Belmont has been 100. well below the level he was for the second half of his first match. So I think he's going to have to look at as the evening progresses. Because Jamie Kelling here is on the hill, he's on the march. Well, he got away with it, didn't he? In his first match, he got away with the slow start, and in this one, he hasn't. So, yeah, it is something he's going to have to address. He's going to have to start better because this is a brutal 84. short format. Jamie O'Connell, 56. 56 left for Jamie Kelling. Forty-six. He goes inside, misses two Stephen match darts, O'Connell, and Belmont 50. will get a second chance with this 50. 18s. The double 16. We've been here before. We've been there before, exactly there. He but we've not been there the before. Belmont. Uh, Belmont is back in it. And it has been one of those evenings so far. Surely not. Back to back, three leg deficit comebacks. Just like Jamie to throw first, game on. Stranger things have happened. And I say that having commentated on last week. Yeah, it was remarkable. Easy if you did five. miss any of the action last week, do head to the Modus. Super Series YouTube channel and check out the recap. 140. Of course, the difficulty with, for Belmont is he's going to have to obtain two breaks if he is going to 25. come back from here. He'll to win the first leg, but he's going to have to find two, which would also include the last leg. 93. He sense this leg is still up in the offing. Can't afford a trebleless turn. Won't suffer one. 100. An interesting 60. position that we find ourselves in, that they find themselves in, because Belmont has already come back and won a match where Kelling is yet to get over the winning line tonight. So even though he's still a heavy favourite to win 60. the game, possibly could be under a bit of pressure, couldn't he? Putting himself under a bit of pressure. But if you asked who hey, was in are. what shoes, you would flip it the other way round, wouldn't you? I think Kelling was the man who exuded the confidence having won 4-3 from 3-1 back. And you would have thought that Belmont was a player who lost Jamie in his Brown opening 97. game. And Jamie Kelling here wants 97 to seal it. It was he that lost 4-1 in his first match. He might be about 57. to win 4-1, but he's going to have to survive at least one dart in this leg. He's going to have to survive two. And Belmont this time place. only needs Belmont. one. And suddenly, the comeback looks a much more realistic prospect. Because he's now throwing to tie up this game at 3-3. Three, three three for the third successive game since that heavy defeat for Kellen against Danny Lauby in match one. And yet again, Stefan Belmont is improving as the game goes 134. on. Case in point there. He's 
Going to have to improve upon the starts 100. in his next game. And he takes on Alex Small in a few games time. He's got a little bit of a break after this one. 100. Biwetsky against Lauby coming next and then Gervin takes on Small. We've got Kellen comes back to meet Biwetsky and then it's that match for Belmont. One forty here, and the door is open for Kelling to get it done this leg. One hundred. Tunnel do. And we put him in the picture, but the same score or better keeps Belmont well placed. One hundred and forty. better. But the 67 is going to have to go to send us all the way. Hasn't hit double 16 yet. 35. Jamie Still Obama hasn't. 71. And now Kelling does get the opportunity. He was clever in going the ball route. 14 for tops. To finally, finally put Belmont away. 31. But still he can't Someone manage it. 32. And Belmont returns unlikely again to send us to a last leg decider. This is awkward, Henry. This is really, really awkward. No score. And it Junior doesn't go. 40. And finally, is this the opportunity that Jamie Kelling has been craving? James and it's over as the man from Andover picks up his first points of the group with a 4-2 victory against Stefan Belmont. He had to work for it in the end after opening up a 3-0 lead, an 86.1 average for JK. A checkout percentage of 50%, 4 from 8. The high out from Belmont being 76, but it is defeat for the Swiss. We're going to take a short break. When we return, Sebastian Biowetsky is in action against Danny Lauby. Stay tuned for this.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. So, Killing has his first points on the board, but it looked at one stage like it was going to be a lot more comfortable than it eventually turned out being. 4-2 winner, he ran out in the end, an 86 average for him. Stefan Belmont, again, with a slow start to that match, he grew into it, but wasn't able to complete a comeback as he did in his opening match. Jamie Kelling with 50% on the outer ring. Belmont with just two out of his 11 attempts. Next up, we have what could be the match of the evening. I think everyone here is really, really looking forward to this one as Biowetsky takes on Danny Lauby. They both, of course, picked up wins in their opening matches of the evening, but in completely contrasting fashions. Lauby getting the evening up and running, really setting the standard for the evening with his 4-1 win. Yet Biowetsky, of course, having to come from behind to register his first win of the evening. So who will come out on top in this one? We know how much Lauby raises his game for these stage performances. Who's going to come out on top, Chris Murphy and Henry Deacon? That we are about to find out. Thank you very much there, Abby. Might get the trumpets out because this may well be match of the day. Yeah, Abby thinks it will be. And... Don't try and shove the questions he asked on to me, Henry. Who's going to come out on top? You're a cool man, Murph. You're a cool man. Well, if you base on Danny Lelby's opening performance, a 96.62, four from nine on the doubles and three maximums, you say it's him. The fall guy would also say him as well. Finalist on the Challenge Tour over the course of the weekend. But as we know with this Super Series format, Anything can change at any given first moment. First Sebastian to throw first. Game on. Well, Paul Hinks, the seasoned official, gets proceedings underway. For what may well be a 100. standout tie of each day of the three days of Group A action. Remember, we will be back tomorrow at our normal slot, 9.30 a.m for the second day in this group, and then it will conclude at the same time on Wednesday, live here on the Moda Super Series Thank YouTube you. channel, and it will be live on Sporty Stuff TV. 83. And later in the week, some really interesting names joining the action as well, the likes of Aaron Monk, who Henry mentioned in the, the previous match. 55. Along with Colin Osborne, one of the players to have hit a nine darter in this tournament. Ten perfect legs we've had now, including one Eight last one. week, a second. But Conor Heenan, who I feel like was kind of unearthed in this event. There's players where this format has just given them everything that they need to be successful in their career. And let's not forget that he won a qualifier just to be here. And his 99. brother won the same qualifier as well, Martin Heenan had. And by being here, you have to do something on tour. Bielecki could be doing something special here. 89. He is going to return, but yeah, all the players that invited here have done it based on merit, based on performances they've done in all sorts of competitions Sebastian around the world. Double ten. 20. Now be returned to Ali Four for an opening leg break of throw. In the mood that he's been in so he's far today, you don't leg. want to Danny be Lally. presenting him with opportunities like that. That was as clean as a whistle for Lau B. Second leg, Danny, oh, really strong first. start in this match, really strong start to his campaign. Danny Lau who we did see just before. The uh, World Championship earlier this year. Really exciting talent to watch, isn't he? 57. Played at the Ali Pali in the last couple of years. Was uh, beaten this time around by Willie O'Connor. Of course, it was O'Connor who ended Biowetsky's run at the UK Open, stopped him reaching the semi finals. 100. Now, I mentioned trumpets, didn't I? 
at the start of the at the start of this match. Now, Danny One Lalby is a musician in his own right, away from the dartboard, part of a band. And I just thought as well, I got grade two in trumpet when I was uh, a little a little bit younger. Why One does that not surprise 40. me, Henry? I got grade four. <laughs> there is a pun to be had, but we're not going to say it. Fifty nine. Right, 150 when Lowry comes back. This is where we want to see the the fireworks, the showmanship. 100. Bull, bull, Daniel bull. Power, Come on. All right, treble 20, treble 20, double 15. 120. Sebastian Ricard, 104. And in fairness, you didn't expect him to miss the double. Bioetsky cannot afford to miss now. Double 16 to he level us up, and he didn't miss. He, he was up to the lucky. task. Good quality contest so far. Finishes of 84 and 104. In our opening two legs, and Bioretsky gets on. the break back and has the throw in the third. 100. Lauby has been prolific across the American circuit this year. He's won three events in 2022. He's the number one U.S. player in the WDF rankings. He's actually 12 40. in the WDF world order. May have that decision to make 99. between the Alexandra Palace or the WDF World Championships come the end of the year. And I just feel that a few years ago, he, he burst onto the scene at the World Championships. We saw some really good stuff. But I feel now he's reaching the level that we've expected from him for a number of years. 96. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think that is fair. And I think that both players are going to be names that we end up watching for a number of years as well. 59. And we can say we've seen him here at the Super Series. Absolutely. And, and Lauby, when he did appear here before, he, w he was impressive then as well. 137. Danny Ricard, 107. Not quite as good as fellow North American Matt Campbell, the Canadian, who won his week and then won the Champions Week. Danny Ricard, 84. Before heading to Ali Pali himself. Lauby finished third in that week. Game shot on the third leg. The third Sebastian leg in this match is won by virtue of that very, very neat 84 checkout. You mentioned that previous week here. See, that's the only other time we've seen a group play where six different nationalities have been represented. And that was a really good phase, that phase six of last year. Some really good 84. players involved in that. Yeah, that, uh, that week was won by Campbell, Thibaut Tricol of France, went on, of course, to be runner-up at the lakeside, finished second. Danny Lowby third ahead of Nathan Rafferty. And then Jim Williams and Cameron 59. Menzies were also through to the finals night. Spain's Jose Justicia made it through to the Champions Week as well. So, yeah, real international feel. And that's kind of when it all started, the game players away. People forget that this tournament was first born during 85. severe international lockdown scenarios and it was very difficult to get players even around the UK into the same room. In fact, when it first started, they weren't in the same room. But now everybody day? gets an opportunity. Geography, no barrier. Age, no barrier. The only 81. criteria, well, a couple, being decent at darts, but not being professional, not having a PDC2 a card. It was perfectly summed up ahead of the launch. This is the EFL Championship of Darts to progress the players through to the next rung on the darting ladder. And these 60. two, I'm sure the we're going to see grace 65. some of the big events in years to come. But in the here and now, Bioetsky is looking for a 3-1 lead on this 65. 62 left. So 12 for the ball. The triple will leave double 13. 
Oh, went for a while away from Daniel the 3-1 lead, Hunter and so Lauby returns for the 1-3-2. Ninety-six. Sebastian Rukana, twenty-six. Twenty-six place, thirty-six. That's a good guide. Come slightly south. And next in door. In four flags. And Sebastian in. Birinovsky. Paul Hinks with a forensic inspection of the double thirteen to ensure the call was correct, and it was. And it gives Birinovsky a three-one lead, and some might Sebastian say first, surprise three-one lead based on what we saw in the pair's opening matches, despite them both winning. However, 3-1 has been a dangerous scoreline so far today. Stefan Belmont come back from behind to beat Nathan Gervin earlier on this evening. We know the pedigree of Danny Lowby. 95. And Biowetsky will know the pedigree of Lauby. He's going to have to get over the line, not give him opportunities, give him chances. Because he's very much a confidence player, is Lauby. Well, he's been in a match before, though, hasn't he, Biowetsky? So, Lauby hasn't really been tested up till now. And he's not at the level he was in that opening match. 57. Sebastian Carl, 167. Just put that confidence player theory to the test a little bit, doesn't it? Because he should be coming off the back of that first match, brimming with it. But he hasn't followed like a man who is. Sebastian Yukar, 70. And you may see a record of one for one. Well, it's Biowetsky, who won his opening game, is looking to go two from two if he can convert the double Daniel 16, Carl, but not on this occasion. And so Lauby needs the rip in one three one to stay in the match. 57, Sebastian Yukar, 16. Well, this to win it then. Two eights, a four one. Two fours. Game shot on the man, and Sebastian it's two wins Bielecki. for Sebastian Bielecki. Coming back from behind to defeat Alex Small earlier this evening and then claiming a comprehensive, comfortable victory against Danny Lauby, who himself had won four one against Jamie Kelling in his opener, but goes down by the same scoreline against Biowetsky, who in the early stages of Group A sits at the top of the table. That may change as the evening continues, and we will be back in a few moments' time when Nathan Gervin takes on Alex Small.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. No, you're not seeing double. There is Chris Murphy alongside me as well. Chris, we built that one the last match to be potentially the match of the evening. Did you expect it to be a little bit closer between Biowetsky and, and Laubi? If Laubi had have played like he did in his first match, it would have been, wouldn't it? But his level dropped 15 points, you can see there by the averages. And Sebastian took advantage of that. Yeah, so maybe um, I think we will see closer tussles when the pair play it again during the week. Yeah, absolutely. But for Biowetsky, especially after the manner in which he had to win his first match, that performance or that result was needed, wasn't it, for him? Yeah, I think so. I think um, in the first match, I mean, he was in a match, but you said it earlier that every time Alex Small started a leg, it seemed to be a 180, and that was always going to be difficult to, uh, to get into that game. But he managed to do it. He's won both of his games. It's a fantastic start for him without really seeing his A game so far. And you've mentioned Alex Small there, of course. He lost his opener, as did Nathan Girvan, in similar fashions, really. They both got off to commanding starts. They both had commanding leads and then, and then relinquished them. How much does that impact two players when it's such a short turnaround? Yeah, at this stage, maybe not so much. I think if it keeps happening, then it can become a problem. Uh, to be honest, in the first five matches, I don't think we've really learned anything. I think we've seen that anybody can be anybody in this group and it's going to be really really close, really competitive and uh, any one of the players could take that top spot. You might want to watch yourself because we are surrounded by wood there and you might end up getting splinters being that sat I'm on the fence. Just being honest, just being honest. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Well, I'll let you get back down to commentary to join Henry Deacon. Might want to get some one seal, Abby. If Chris is going to stay on the fence like that. Game six of our evening sees Nathan Gervin, the talented young Scotsman, take on Alex Small. And of all the battles in Group A this week, this is the most popular renewal. This is the fifth time that they face each other, the fourth in 2022. And in their record, it is a 3-1 lead to Nathan Gervin over those four matches. Nathan Gervin won each of their first three, the first being at the British Internationals. That was in the youth category in 2016. Like development tour first. battles, three of them this year. Gervin winning 4-3 and 4-1 before the last meeting in Hildesheim in Development Tour 18. Seems small win by four legs to two. But it is their first meeting in the big time, in front of the cameras, in 46. front of the lights, here in the Modus Super Series. 96. It'd be interesting to see how both of these will react to four free defeats in 60. their opening games of the day. Gervin going down 4 3 to Stephen Belmont. He was free, he had darts of 3 0 in that particular game. While to Alex Small, he found himself in a position of authority before going down to defeat against Biowetsky. But this is a nice start. 135. For the man from Arbo. Talking about Arbo, we can't mention that part of the world Where's about yet? saying a very good evening to Alan Souter, who is tuning in to the coverage this evening on the Modus Super Where's Series it? YouTube channel. He was tuning in, giving his support to Nathan Gervin. 97. Who came through one of his academies. Very much the star pupil and very much a star of the stage. 100. Alec your car, 170. 42. Nathan your car, 104. A 104 for Nathan Gervin. And he takes it out, no problem at all. I know Henry Deacon's voice hasn't changed that much. That's me, Chris Murphy, back alongside you in comms. I did hear the Ron Seal comment as well, Henry, so uh, just watch yourself, pal. Second leg, I like to throw first. Game on. It's going to be a long three days. <laughs> <laughs> but a really strong start from Gervin, but we've been here before, haven't we? Indeed, we were. A darts of 3 0 against Stefan Belmont. Well, he had a dart for 3 0 against the Swiss, missed it. And then Belmont picked up the pieces 
And as we mentioned, this format is all about how you recover one from setbacks, and that's one way to do so. He's actually using Nathan Gervin. Andy Jenkins as darts. Tonight. 93. Borrowed them off the former world championship semi-finalists after... 45. Breaking his own darts at the weekend. And I got that from a very, very good source. 56. The source being the person whose darts is borrowed. Not Heinz. 57 of those, but there was 180 of them. And it puts pressure on this 32 for Gervin. Double nine now. Yeah, the gets her in the end, gets the break of foe and leads by two legs to nil. We've been here before. Adrian Hines and Beans, are you, Henry? I thought you were teeing up some kind of has-been pun like for Andy Jenkins. Purpose. That's not Demon. advisable. He is a king around these parts, Chris Murphy, I'll have you know. The we king will. of caution. We will be seeing him again. 100. Well, the Super Series, a staple of this tournament. 60. Well, his darts do the business this evening in the capable hands of this man. 100. So if Gervin wins the £5,000 at the end of the week, what kind of commission is Jenks on? Don't give him ideas. <laughs> 41. One hundred. Well, both Small and Gervin came racing out of the blocks in their opening matches this evening, but Small is stuttering at the start, and Gervin is once again at it from the off. One hundred and twenty-one. I was going to mention, is there perhaps a little bit of a touch of second gain syndrome here for Alex Small? Sixty. Nathan O'Clark, eighty. Especially the way the first one went as well. And you can fester as a consequence of it. Well, he's allowed Gervin the luxury of going this you? route to leave his favoured double 16 by being so far back. 81, Nathan O'Connor, 32. Already thrown seven darts at double in this match. Nathan Gervin, sure the third leg. nine Nathan in the Gervin. end. Alex Small hasn't had any in the opening three legs. And perhaps a statistic that boils it down more than any other is the ton plus throws. Nathan Gervin's got well, seven of them. First, Alex on. Small just two. And that shows he's being royally outscored. 97. Yeah, although he does have a 140 and 180, the same as Nathan Gervin. So it is kind of famine or feast for Small in this 60. contest. We saw 81. him hit three of them in that opening defeat to Bioretsky, but the trouble bid hasn't been so kind second time around. Bioretsky back in action 70. next against Jamie Kelling, fresh from a 4 2 victory against the slow starting 26. Stefan Belmont, and that is becoming a theme in his matches. Luckily, Abby didn't ask me about that. While I was up there with her then, because he was kind of hovering around quite close to where I was, and I wouldn't have shied away from the answer. 135. Despite being accused of sitting firmly on the fence. It was Abby who made the original comment. 92. Well, I'll put you on the spot then. Henry, just for one last time tonight, I promise this will be the last one. Who's using the darts better, Gervin or Jenks? Fifty-seven. Alec Yukar, one hundred and four. Answer the question. Well, I'll do it at the end of this leg because Small wants one hundred and four. Tops. Sixty-four. It goes high and above, and this could be for the match if he can take out the one-five-six. Not going to go, so Small will return. 
for Peter Thompson. Thompson. I'll make the par 40. Game shot in the four well, Small's play. using Alex his Small. very effectively there. And the lead has just got a little smaller. Fifth leg, Nathan to throw first. At this Game present moment in time, Nathan's thrown them better, but that's because he's the player throwing them. Well saved. One out of that 20. one. But that one rejected. Would have been an opening maximum 85. for Nathan Gervin. Do you remember, I do recall once, I think it was Adrian Lewis 91. having a bounce out during a, a perfect leg. He would have had, he, he threw nine perfect darts, 60. basically hit nine trebles, but one of them fell out. Well, Gervin's racing towards the finishing line, so the story about another player who had to use different darts, we may mention a little bit later on in the evening because he's returning for 150, what? but it's going to be under some pressure. Well, he decides to go across for treble 18. I was just wondering whether the lie of that first start there would have inclined him to maybe go for another to leave double 15, even Thank with Small know. not on a finish back on 176. Yeah, agreed. 100. Which way does he go here? Like double 16, but the bullseye route is the approved route here because the 25 gets you a couple of darts at double. It is double 10. Game shot and it's and in. Match. Nathan, Gervin. And Nathan Gervin has used Andy Jenkins' darts a great effect, a 4 1 success to earn his first win of the evening. He will probably feel like he should be on four points, having led Stephen Belmont 3 1 in his opening match. But he comes back and puts it right, inflicting a second defeat on the night on Alex Small. A 4 1 win, a 104 checkout, the high small restricted to just two darts at double in that match. Game seven coming up next when Jamie Kelling takes on the so far unbeaten Sebastian Biowetsky.
Hello and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. We're six games in to week nine, Group A, and we've just seen Nathan Girvan respond really, really impressively to his first defeat of the evening. A 4-1 win over Alex Small in that match. And we've seen some really impressive combination finishing from him all evening a 96 and a 112 in his first match and as you can see on the screen a 104 in that last match a 4-1 victory for for him an 87 average to Alex Small's 85 he just couldn't reach the heights that he did in his opening match still two 180s to add to the tally that he posted in his first match. But it's now time for our seventh match of the evening. Jamie Kelling is back up on the stage against Sebastian Biowetsky, who, of course, recently recorded that superb victory over Danny Lauby. He's been victorious in his opening two matches of the evening. Can he make it the hat trick? Chris Murphy, I'm going to let you answer that one. Well, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, I think he can. There. I don't always sit on the fence. I think he will, in fact. I'll go as far to say that because he is a special talent and he's shown tonight different elements of his game, Sebastian Biowetsky. A fight back win after really weathering a storm against Alex Small in his opener and a much more comfortable win taking advantage of a dip in standard by Danny Lauby. What we haven't first yet seen to throw first. is the Biowetsky brilliance. And Game maybe on. now is the time against Jamie Kelling, who has lost 4-1 and won 4-2. Indeed, that was a song back 21. in the 70s, wasn't it? Now is the time to make things right. Perhaps, Henry. Not sure how you would know that, but here we go. Look, look how right I am. What is on it? Here comes... Okay. The bolt of brilliance from Biowetsky. You should stop sitting on the fence. 56. A 182 open. A 180 average. Well, that's cr come crashing down, but not a bad way to back 100. it up with a ton. As you mentioned, Jamie Kenning is actually... Over the two games, been the player who's played at the most consistent level. Lost for one in the opening game to Danny Lauby with an average of 86.2. Then won 4-2 against Belmont with an average of 86.1. 91. So we know roughly the level that he's playing at this evening. And a level where you're going to force your opponent to do something to depose of you. Well, Bioretsky has come out of the traps flying in this first leg. And sometimes with the Davidson, you just need a couple of games on stage to acclimatise and adjust. Well, it looks as if he's done that and then some. He's had double 16 after 12 to take the opening leg in next to no time at all. And Jamie so Kenning, to be fair, 52. is back in Andover. Well, that could be used. That can't. No score. Jamie O'Carr, one. Just sees that do lean slightly, eclipsing part of that double and it gives Kelling an outside opportunity not one he's going to take it's difficult to get the full picture on, on doubles cameras on darts boards come from a low position off to the left hand side so even though sure the, the dart can leg, look so like it's blocking it it's not always the case well, that one though was straight in and it's a 16 data that could have been so much better after those three missed on double 16 to throw first. but it Game is on. a break of throw for the pole Indeed it is. Looking to get on to six points as a result of victory here. And I just wonder what that would do for his confidence if he can rack up as many points as possible in a scenario well, where he knows that he can still go up a level. And everyone else in that practice room will know exactly that. One hundred. I should remind you, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome want. along to us here at the Moda Super Series. This is a one-off six o'clock session tonight. We're going to return at our usual time of half past nine tomorrow and Wednesday morning and then 
for Group C 100. on Thursday and Friday. We will have the double session, including the 10 o'clock Group B, both nights before Saturday night's final on Saturday, which will be in front of a live audience. You can join us. Head over to dartshop.tv for more information on how you can get tickets to our showpiece Saturday occasion. 137. Really is, uh, a place to be on a Saturday night, isn't it? Kind of exclusive club. And those who were there last Saturday will be able to pounds. buy the T-shirt soon. I was there on the most dramatic night of darts action at the Super Series. Still on this. No longer, but it is a dominant darting what display so far from the Polish prospect. Comfortable. 81. Sebastian requires 60. It's probably the one word to describe it at this present moment in time. Two at top, so two nil. 20. Just wonder Jimmy if that first start was a little bit of a, a hindrance. They do stand to attention, the darts of Biowetsky. And now it's double 19 for Kelling to claim 26. the leg. Sebastian Yukar, 40. Could not hoover up the crumbs left for him. And there's no blocker this time. Jamie but the opportunity 19. comes and goes, and Bioetsky, for all of his dominance, may find himself pegged back level if Kelling can take out the double eight. Game show what was it we were saying about Jamie the tortoise Kelly. and the hare? If you're slow and steady, sometimes you've got to finish the race. To finish first, first you've got to finish, and that's what Jamie Kelling did on the double eight in this leg. That's a, that like Jamie a slow first. start from Game Kelling. On. But he is level. 21 darts to break back. 100. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And that after, his opponent missed five at double. 100. To double his lead. 100. What was it Abby asked me at the start? I'm not so sure 100. about my answer anymore. Belmont versus Small next. 60. Belmont needing to bounce back from that defeat, but Small without 60. a victory yet so far. And it's going to be a, a contrast in pace, isn't it, that one? It's going to be about who settles to the opponent's pace the better. Yeah, absolutely. If Small loses again, it will leave a, an unpleasant odour up his nostrils. One I would say 40. that the start is also crucial, but we've seen with Stefan Bellman, he gets better as the game goes on. And maybe Jamie Kelling is getting better as the game goes on here because he leads himself on 101 one. after 12 one. to go 2-1 up. We wouldn't have thought we'd be saying that a couple of seconds ago. Shovel 19 would have left double 12, and so Biowetsky will return 59. for the 164. And if he can get this, well, this would be a bolt from the blue. Ninety-five. Jamie Lucar, 52. Well, no bolt. Having halted the charge at the start of the match, Kelling can lead here. Game shot the third leg. Jamie Kelling. Tops for 2-1. And he's been much more clinical on his doubles. In the couple of legs in which he's had darts, he's 33%. At this level, that's pretty good, isn't it? You go to the board with a double, you're going to hit it in that visit. 140. Exactly that. And as Chris mentions, over this format and um, level that the players tend to play at in this event, it's going to give you opportunities 100. to win matches. And over this format, because you're playing so many games. Don't always have to win at your best. Find ways to Fishy win nine. with a B game. And that is where B games are exposed for good or for worse in this format. You'll have one really good game in a day. One bad game in a day. It's over those three 100. mean matches in the middle. Match up to a nice enough B game to give you enough points. Well, Jamie Kelling will play his 100th game in this Super Series in its various guises. 
this evening, and his checkout percentage across all of those matches is almost exactly 33%. Got to be confident when going for doubles with that kind of record. Yeah, when you look at his all-time record average, I think the one word you'd describe it is, is steady, and I mean that in a good 24. light. He's the only one who hasn't averaged in three figures out of the three that have played before, but... 100. He's solid, if not spectacular, isn't he? And sometimes that can do the job, particularly over a league Jimmy phase Carl of 15 one, matches. Well, it goes to the 1-0 to the Arsenal mantra, doesn't it? Where you don't always play at your best, but those... 1-0 victories that you can carve out away from home. And I'm sure as a Sheffield Wednesday Thank fan, you you've been on the receiving end of one or two of them from the Gunners over time. Never just one. He wants more than one here, Bioetsky. This is what you youngsters call the Taylor Swift, isn't it? James Sean Kelly the is feeling 22. Leading 3-1. And if Biowetsky is going to make it three wins on the spin, then he's going to have to win three legs on the spin. On. And the bolt will need a blitz. We are never, ever getting back together after that comment, Chris. 140. I don't get it. My, my ad-libs are well rehearsed, Henry. If you actually... Go down those well, avenues. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to be on the same wavelength for more uh, classical music, man. Myself, trumpets and things. One Radio hundred. two type. Well, who's well, going to sound the right tones and tune then in this one? At the minute, it looks as if Jamie Kelling is hitting all the right notes. And he's on course for a 4-1 score and a 4-1 win. And he leaves himself 140 after nine. It's not safe yet. A little raise of the eyebrows when he hit the single one, you might have spotted. There has to go 17. Does go 17. And 130 is an easier out short than 140. But it's not that easy if you don't get a go at it, which he will. 85. And he was close to busting that. Wow. We'll get two goes at this. Needs the treble now. Would have left in the ball, so Kelly returns to 55 for the match. 55. Well, that wasn't me meant. 45. Sebastian Maybe Lebron, it just knocked 72. him out of his stride. You can see him reliving it, doing his own version of an action replay there. But the action might be continuing. 52. Jamie well, McCarthy. Maybe 10. not. And just after those two, he didn't really attack the double five last time. He's going straight for it again. Game and this time, he is Kelling. straight in it. And Jamie Kelling inflicts the first defeat of the evening on Sebastian Biowetsky of Poland, picking up his second win of the night, having seen off Stefan Belmont earlier on. Again, an unspectacular game, but Kelling taking full advantage of Biowetsky throwing away. A strong start to the match. He came racing out of the blocks, but it turned out to be the only leg he won. And Jamie Kelling won 4 1 and left me with egg on my face.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here in Portsmouth. We're seven matches in to tonight's action and this is turning out to be an incredibly difficult group to call. So many unpredictable results coming in already. The latest, Sebastian Biowetsky losing 4-1 to Jamie Kelling and it really was the manner of the defeat that was so surprising. As you can see on your screen, the Polish 18-year-old, just one out of 10 on the outer ring, really Really struggling at the back end of legs. Kellen with an average of 81 in that match. Four out of 10, 40% checkout percentage. And as Murph said in commentary, you're going to win quite a few of your games with a percentage like that. So moving on to our next match then, we have Stefan Belmont back up on the hockey against Alex Small. It's going to be intriguing to see how they both react in this one. Alex Small, the only player left yet to pick up any points tonight so far so let's get into this one then chris murphy henry deacon lads i'm not going to bother getting you to predict the results anymore we'll get paul the octopus back i think he got a few right at that world cup didn't he yeah he must have earned a few people a few squid henry Quickly moving on, let's get into our middle match of the evening session here at the Super Series as Stefan Bellman takes on Alex Small. There's Abby Wadley alluded to. The Welshman yet to get off the mark here in Group A on debut. Both of these players, David Tons, but Alex Small, the 24-year-old from Wattsville in Wales, throwing a Michael Van Gerwen dart is the champion of champions. Perhaps appropriate that a player from Michael Van Gerwen darts is a champion of champions against the 33-year-old Stefan Belmont. From Cham in Switzerland, a Challenge Tour winner in 2022. Interesting one to predict, first Murph. Lady I don't think we quite first. know. We, we speak in boxing about styles making fights. It's fair to say, and without disrespect to either of the players, there's two contrasting styles going toe to toe here. Yeah, and I think this evening has already shown that the phrase of the night is probably expect the unexpected. 100. How does that work when we don't know what to expect? Alex Small showed 100. signs of throwing those MVG darts like MVG earlier on, didn't he, in his first match, kicking off three legs with 180s. But since then, hasn't gone very well for him at 60. all. Also a very interesting nickname for Stefan Belmont. I think I saw right on the screen he was called Belly. Might have to rethink that one. 60. Quickly moving on. But going back to, to Alex Smoy playing with the MVG darts, ironically, the one thing he hasn't done as of yet is doing the right things at 100. the right times. Absolutely, and that is crucial. Timing in this sport is so often the difference. And we saw a what case of 180s for show, doubles for dough in that first match, the old Bobby George adage. Is that 180 for show? One hundred. I'll let your car one hundred and sixty. But it makes him marginal favourite for the leg. Down he goes. Well, he's gonna go across to the southwestern part of the Step board. Your car 141. To leave 76 if the 141 doesn't go. It still could. Treble 19 or treble 15. What's the MO? Treble 19 for double 12. For what would have been a whip throwing start. I had a whiff of a big finish there, Stefan Belmont. Game shot on the first leg, Alex it's Small. Small. Who steals the leg, who seals the leg in 15 darts and breaks the throw. Advantage, Alec. Second leg, Alec, to throw first. Game on. 60. Well, we were wondering how the pace was going to suit the pair. Well, in the early knockings, a 15 dart of a small, 97 average of Belmont, 93 for Alec, but of course, still early days to truly read into 85. those statistics. Yeah, and we can so we can sometimes maybe put too much emphasis on how another player is going to affect 60. their opponent. I think what is key 
is to play your own game, isn't it? So to find a way to keep your own 121. Rhythm, despite what your opponent's doing. And you can get drawn into, and I'm not just saying this through guessing, players have told me, you can get drawn into playing at the pace of your opponent, whether that's quicker or slower than you would usually throw. 140. Whatever you do in between, make sure that the time between your darts is the same as it always is. 65. Went for the 25 to leave the big fish, did Alex Small. A small big fish. Coming 100. Up. Alec, How does that work? 170. Well, we are by the seaside, so there's a lot of big fishes in the ocean. But he couldn't find one on this occasion, so Belmont is back for 143. Yeah, he's threatened the 141, but he's not going to trouble the combo this time. 119. So he will leave it handy. And if Small is to protect his lead, he's going to have to take this out. Oh, he's blocked himself. Why did he stay there? Did not have to stay 34. there. Stefan Ilkar, 24. Game management as Belmont returns for the double 12. Game shot on the second. And there it is. And that's the break back. We're level at one apiece, courtesy of two breaks of throw in our opening couple of legs. It's Belmont with the advantage of having the darts in the third. Like is it going to be academic yeah. once again? Does it frustrate you as much as it frustrates me when you see things like that? Players blocking a treble and just stubbornly staying at the same he's route eight. rather than giving himself the best possible opportunity to win. He'd, he'd blocked the treble 18. 100. He had 94 left. Could have just gone treble 20, double 17. Giving himself a dart at double by going for an open bed. Yes, and, and one argument would be, well, they, they're going with the rhythm. They don't want to step back to disrupt their rhythm. But for me, well, surely yeah, you'd it. step back. You had to do that anyway, didn't you? Exactly. To so try and get around that. Step back, recalculate, take that couple of seconds Fish just to seven. think things through in the heat of the moment and then go with what's right. Don't rush into it. You don't see Tiger Woods rushing in for a putt on the 18th green in Augusta, do you? 100. Yeah, sometimes it can be 96. frustrating watch. And I'm sure when players watch it back, they'll think, why didn't I do that? It can be stubborn folk, darts players. Poor board management, as we call it. 97. And of course, always constructive here in the 100. country box. And we do get a number of players who have played in requisite weeks also tune in to us and they watch back their weeks and they sometimes commend our comments, sometimes not. But well, Moreno Blom actually last week, he was trying to explain that. I still think crazy. One, two, four route, treble 17. And uh, I, I listened 16. to his expl explanation and told him to his face that I disagreed completely. Madness from Moreno, if you ask me. But anyway... He'll be staying there this time. Single for the ball. Oh, he's going to walk up and have a look himself. You can just ask the referee, Stefan. That's what he did in the end. 61. But he couldn't find the ball's eye. 88. The ball's eye. 63. Would have been 25. for yet another break in this break half long. Break half long, like it. Chooses 12s. And now just 12. 13. Oh, right on the wire. And it will require 25. What's the route for his opponent? It's the more conventional He's way. On the third leg. And it's Troy. the way that works for him. And the break athlon, as coined by Dr. Deacon alongside me, continues. Dr. Deacon. Well, I'd like to throw first game on. 40. 
60. Well, it's kind of living up to the to the way we talked about at the start of the match, Henry, that we didn't know what to expect and what's happened is three breaks of throw. We're still none the wiser as to predicting the likely outcome. The prognosis here is you just don't know what's going to happen next. And you just get the sense it's a little bit edgy. Alex Small hasn't won yet. Stefan Bellman has won one and lost one. He won one in... He played well. He hit three maximums, 95 average against Gervin. And then there was a, a little bit of a drop-off in the next one, a 15 points differentiation 60. in that 4-2 defeat to Kelling. And he's averaging here 82. 58. So maybe we found Bellman's flatline level, maybe, between the, the 80 to, to 85 range. You play on the development tour 92. this weekend. Did Bellman, as did Lauby, for heading over to Portsmouth from Leicester. 59. Step on your car, nice 108. Three hour drive or so from the East Midlands. Well, the and this is a three coming up there, isn't it? Back in Leicester. This would be a middle of the range finish. 72. Not going to go. Yeah, nice route. The Shanghai on the 18s. And he'll be back for that double. 60. Stefan, you will call 36. I'm going, to, I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that break off online. I like it. Splitting here. Double, double. Double seven required for Stefan Belmont. 14. Yes, pal. Well, that wasn't the intention. 22. And is it going to come back and bite Belmont? Can Small get a big one? Not on this occasion. And so double seven for Belmont, who has left Stephen this a little 14. bit dicey. Interesting. I could have chosen to split that. The in the end, Stephen he goes Belmont. for it. In the end, he gets it. And he does break again. Four successive breaks of throw in this match. It's 2 2. It is. At we this juncture, the first game on. probably the lowest standard that we've seen so far this evening. But as I mentioned earlier on, you're going to have 45. one really good performance in the day. You're going to have one which isn't up to the standard that we would usually see. It's about the mean game in the 100. middle, making them count, making sure you play well enough in those matches. Maybe the players are using up their... One poor game, which they are allowed to use in the day. Interesting with Stefan Bellman. He's 23rd on the Challenge Tour Order of Mayor, which considering that he won a Challenge Tour event early on this year means that 45. he played well to win that event, but perhaps the events around it, he hasn't quite been as consistent or as consistent as he would like to be. Interesting level on points, or in this case, pounds. 55. Pounds mean points in the PDC system. With Daddy Lowby, but Lowby just above him on the order of merit in 22nd after 85. this weekend's exploits in Leicester, home of the Foxes. Yeah, and I think it's a fair assessment you make, Henry, because he has played in the lion's share of events as well. It was a seventh of the year that he won, and he's played in what every single the event way? since then without getting past the last 32. 96. Almost like you know what you're talking about, isn't it? That might be a stretch too far. And we can see you don't waste your days off. Well, it's a bit of a game off for the pair of them. But a 180 from Belmont in this leg might just be the crucial point. Usually in a match, it's who can get the break. This one's about who can get the hold. And that 135 makes it a little less likely that Belmont will. It will only be one dart a double. It won't even be that. Well, that's a stinker from Stefan. 34. I think you look at 40. Chops are small. Game and the, the break after on continues. Small. But Alex Small will be hoping that there's only one hold in this game, and it's in this leg. 
because it would secure him a 4-2 victory. Six for the gully, and Belmont is one. from the Alps. Well, at the minute, 60. he's just slaloming a little bit. It is just 100. a couple of legs, isn't it? But it, it does stay on your Alps theme. Just feel like he has got a mountain to climb. 65. Maybe not so much on the ropes. He's on the slopes. A slippery slope. 140. I'll stay away from the uh, teased puns for now. Things are not looking good for Belmont at the moment, although, once again, the player throwing second... 100. ...seems to be the player throwing first in this bizarre bout of a darts match. 135. Step on your car, 160. Belmont looking to break the ice again with his 161. Fifty-nine. Went for the ball, gets the 19 in the end to leave 102. Well, it is Stefan Belmont smelling Small's blood. 25. Stefan Ucar, 102. 102 would rather freshen him up. Double 16. 70. 134, Stefan Yokal, 32. Pressure on. 14. And it just sneaks in the other Stephen side Yokal, into the 40. double seven. The one wire for Belmont. And that could be it for him in this match. This would be a big win for Alex Small. It'd be his first at the Super Series. If he can get tops. 20. Well, he almost 18. had to switch, didn't he, there? It was so, so high, the first two darts. He could not be called markers. Game shot on the six legs. Belmont, Belmont makes it another break of throw. Now, this is something that doesn't happen very often. A match going seven breaks of throw. I'm going to scour through my information device like and find out exactly one. how often, because... Contrary to popular belief, all that stuff isn't in my head all the time. 100. Right, 11 times there. Wasn't bad, was it? Found it quite fast. 11 times before. 60. Has every single leg in a match in the Super Series gone against a throw? And that is across precisely 6,100. And 94 matches. Only 11 times has every leg gone against the throat. Staggering statistic. You work 60. out the percentage. So don't worry, Henry, I was talking to the viewer. Teton teaser. And I think it happened the other week. A, a game involving Graham Usher off the top of my head went all seven legs against the darts. Alex Small will be hoping that It'll be the case in this one. It'll be his first victory in this competition. It'll get him on the board. Actually, happened this week. Moreno Blom and Andy Hamilton. Did it did, yes. Last 100. week, rather. <laughs> they all roll into one. Well, the Swiss could be getting the victory <laughs> unless a divine intervention from Alex Small snatches it from his grasp. That maximum leaves him on 120. Forty-three. I like your car. One hundred and twenty. Well, it could be tricky to find tops. And what he was trying to do there is leave the dart out of the way, and he's drifted too far away. And Belmont has the chance to take out a big finish and finally hold two treble nineteens for double twelve. There's one of them. Clattered off the other dart. One hundred and four. Seventh break. 
to win a bizarre bout. Bill 10. Game and there it is. Alex Small. Alex Small obtains the seventh break of throw. It sees him win the seventh leg. And it is his first victory here at the Super Series of a 74 and a half average, four from 11 on the checkouts. It wasn't a classic, but Alex Small will not forget it because it is his first win in the Super Series. It gets him off the mark. We're going to take a short interval here when we return in a few moments' time upstairs with Abby. We're going to see Danny Lauby in action against Nathan Gervin.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Alex Small register his first victory of the evening. It wasn't a classic contest, both players averaging below 80 in that one. As you can see on your screens there, Alex Small with two 180s to Stefan Belmont's one. Four out of 11 on the outer ring though, both players really struggling at the back end of legs. But a really crucial victory there for the Welshman to get him up and running in this one. So now we're going to take a little look at the table, look at the stand in so far. And it's Jamie Kelling who sat top of the crop. Of course, he got off to the worst possible start in his opening opening match, losing 4-1 to Danny Lauby. But he's responded very well since then. Sebastian Biowetsky sat in second and it's Stefan Belmont currently at the bottom of the table two points but there are three players of course on two points at the moment so getting into our next match then it is Danny Lauby who's put in two contrasting performances so far he's taken on Nathan Gervin who's looked incredibly impressive especially towards the back end of legs so to talk you through this one we'll hand back to our commentary team of Chris Murphy and Henry Deacon thank you very much Abby and this encounter has the real look of a potential game of the night here at the Super Series. Both stars will suit each other. Both have played really good stuff this year. But perhaps if you look at the first couple of games this evening, two contrasting averages. Danny Laub in his first game, 4-1 win against Jamie Kelling, averaged 96.62, hit three maximums in that win. Nathan Gervin's best performance of the night, ironically, was in defeat 4-3 to Stefan Bellman. He averaged 93.83. Then in the second round of fixtures, Laubi averaged 85.15 in a 4-1 defeat to Biowetsky, whilst Gervin won 4-1 against Looks Small, like an average of 86.93. So we'll Game hope on. that following that little blip in round two, in round three, they'll have an incline again. Yeah, it really does have the feeling of a, a proper tungsten taste bud tantalizer, this one. Two speedsters, two players that are capable of really high ceilings. 100. But 81. That's kind of displayed in the opening couple of visits from Lauby, at least. Consistency is the concern. 96. Famous phrase in football, consistency is key. 57. You need to find that here at the Super Series. Over this long course format. Particularly in this group. We, you mentioned it about Jamie Kelling. That he's unspectacular, but pretty steady, pretty solid. And we just saw the league table there for the first time. And guess who's top of it? Despite losing his first match 4-1 to this 140. man. 140. A stereotypical wading effect. Danny Hooker, 83. Well, both players in similar range here. But Labby gets two darts at double 16. Having to step across, he's that tells you that the dart was a bit of a blocker, but he's managed to find the angle that allowed entry and sees him take the first leg. And of course, as a left-hander, the way that he so views the darts first, and, and lies are completely different to a right-handed player. Yeah, much before the right, much much prefer the right-hand side of the board. Easy for me to say. And he will the, the left-hand side. So those 16s and 8s can get pretty interesting at times. 100. Whereas the lie on the double 10 is quite nice for him to manoeuvre across. I'm sure it won't be long before we see some kind of ambidextrous darts player that throws at different 96. targets or block targets with their other hand. See it with Ronnie O'Sullivan in the snooker, don't we? Very, very capable with his left hand. 123. Can win more championships probably with his left hand. Well, downstairs to ensure the leaving of a finish here. 95. It is the 170 that's left. But the reason they go for those routes on their approach shots is because you can't hit what you don't leave. 170. That would have been the blue touch Danny Rikawa, paper spark to our week. We get to see a real big one yet. 100. We're not Danny going Rikawa, to that time. 74. So Gervin returns for this middle of the field 74. 
These are the shots that win matches. He's got about two thirds of the bed to aim at to the left 54. of that. Daniel Clark, 44. It was maybe too close to it. I, I think it probably flicked off the flight that one. Open bed, double ten. 34. Nathan Clark, 20. Same target for Gervin when he returns to try and reach parity at one apiece. Yeah, that last start felt a little bit rushed, but there was nothing leg. rushed Nathan about Gervin. that from Nathan Gervin. That was composure personified as he makes it one apiece in this particular matchup. Danny Dalby had the opportunity to go 2 0 up. And look at the averages. This is a quality contest. We gave it the build up, and rightly so. 84. Biowetsky back up next against Belmont, who for me has been the. 57. The player I'm most concerned about in this group. I was all, I was asking Paul Nicholson last week. I was up on the the balcony. Oh, One hundred and twenty. What's that? I'm not sure what happened there. So what happened there is the darts come out of Lauby's hand as it's gone from the retrieval from the right to the left. It was. It and I think the referees thought that it wasn't a throw. In my opinion, it wasn't a throw. Well, Henry's describing what happened, but I. Regulation 94. throw. Surely it wasn't. Well, it is Monday night here. I, I suppose we can get the gadgets and gizmos out, and we can analyse it maybe on the touchpad yeah, later. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to try and try and see it again if possible. But it makes a good talking point, and I'm sure our uh, One out alert of social media admins will get it clipped up for us to have a look at ASAP. Do a great job, don't they? Always have the finger on the pulse. But Lauby himself uh, just looked a little bit disappointed and he was shaking his head before the referee Paul Hicks called the 120. So maybe it was, maybe he did kind of throw it as he pulled it back. Game shot on the third leg, Danny Lauby. Well, Lauby wins a leg anyway, in the end, yeah. but it certainly creates a talking point. The things you see, Henry, the things you, it's amazing, isn't it? The amount of darts we watch here at the Super Series and things happen that you just don't Ball expect. Nathan to throw first, game on. That just, I'm not sure that that he threw that dart over arm. But then again, there's some ambiguity in the rules as well because player throws an underarm dart. They just say it doesn't count. They don't give it him back and say, throw it again. 22. I think a lot lies on the reaction of the player though as well in that specific moment. Lauby, of course, disappointed, but he kind, of, he did have that little look, but he kind of then had to shrug his shoulders about it. I'm wondering whether he thought it was an illegal throw, he was disappointed with himself, or whether he was disappointed with the call. That I'm not 93. quite 200% sure with yet. Yeah, I, I will have to see it again. I can only think that it came out of his hand when he was kind of drawing it back. 58. But is that a throw? That's the question. We need VAR. 140. Yeah, well, we will... Uh, deeper into that hopefully later we get the chance to to talk about that with abby upstairs and maybe even with danny himself because he seemed to he was the first to react wasn't he, he was the first one to make it look like it There's was a mistake 146. well it looked as if initially as gervin goes for the 146 it looked initially as if he was then going to retrieve it to then throw 56. it again didn't it on mm. first instance But back to the action that is live and current. 59, Nathan O'Connor, 90. Gervin returns for 90 for two apiece. We'll stay there. The treble leaves double five. 80. And that goes Daniel just above the wire. So Lauby wants 110 for the break of throw for a 3-1 for lead. And it would put him one away. One dart at double 18. 92. Strays the other side of the Nathan wire. Nathan O'Connor, 10. Double five, a two each, great marker. That one just leans a little bit no over, Danny and he plants 18. one in between, but not in. Real opportunity then for Lauby to steal a march in this match. But he can't make the most of it either. Ten, Nathan Newcar, ten. This time it drags just below. Only going to get one. 
Double two. Steps back to recompose. Six. Danny and that's eight. the fourth world phone double in this leg that's just gone the other side of the wire. Game shot on the fourth leg. Daniel Albe. Well, that'll be in the end. Kind of falls over the line in that leg. The match where the talking point has been a, a dart that dropped on the floor and the rules like about that. First. Something Game different, on. something not seen before at the Super Series. 60. One hundred and thirty four. Ninety six. One hundred and thirty four. One hundred and forty. Sixty-three. One hundred and forty. Nathan Clark, one hundred and seventy. Ninety-eight. Daniel Clark, sixty-five. Sixty-five. For Labby, he's hit a three there. And now the ball. 40. Nathan O'Connor, 72. 72. So, Gervin here. Game One dart at tops. So that's all he needed Irvine. to bring it back to 3 2. But. Now be still one away. Gervin has the advantage of further here in the sixth. And sometimes seeing is believing. 100. 100. Just going back to that, 100. that throw earlier on. I've been informed we are going to get the chance to analyse that with Abby up on the, the gantry after game 10. 57. I'll be joining her for that, so I'll get a proper look at it, Henry. And uh, I'll make my my 100. judgment then. Murphy's Law will be the verdict. Judge Murphy, that could be a daytime TV program. 56. And Murphy's Law is actually, if anything can go wrong, will go wrong. 41. And that might be the case for Lauby yet, because that moment in the match didn't stop him winning that leg. But it has been, again, a bit of a mess, hasn't it, the last couple of legs? 92. And you can see where the averages just dipped from the mid-90s now down to 89.37 Lauby, 84.82 for Gervin. But it is Gervin who is looking to force a decider. 196 points away from doing so. 100. Making some inroads. Big score here from Lauby. The leg could... Still swing, still change, but he doesn't like the lie of the first dart because it stands up like 60. that. Nathan O'Connor, 96. So for 3-3, three, three. double 18. He shot on the sixth leg, Nathan Gervin. Moments win matches, and that's a big one for Nathan Gervin. <laughs> Kept his composure, a nice, cool kill, a two-darter. Seventh and final has a dart, the first but that game. hasn't always counted for much this evening. One hundred and forty. That'll count for a lot. One forty to kick off with the darts in the final leg. Forces Nathan Gervin to get a big in himself. The tunnel do, depending on this next visit. One hundred. Needs one forty minimum here. As the man from our broth. 91. So six starts, you think, for Danny Lowby from here. And that has come out of the treble 20. Recovers well with the last start to lead 141. But it should be 81 he comes back for after nine. 
121. Danny Ricard, 141. Well, he's got half a dozen darts to take it out. 89. So he will return, needing 52 to pick up what would be his 96. second victory Daniel of the Carr, evening. 52. Lost to Biowetsky. Beat Kelly. Are you sure on the match? Danny Lowry. Beat Nathan Gervin. In a rather strange affair, which included a rather strange moment, one that we will analyse later on upstairs with Abby. But it's a 4-3 win for Danny Lowby. It didn't do him any damage in the end. The dropped dart, the dart that never was. He wins with an average of more than 90 in the end and picks up his second win of the night. Coming next, Biowetsky faces Belmont. That will be on your screen in just a couple of minutes' time.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here in Portsmouth. I'm joined by Chris Murphy for this one, just so that we can go through the controversial points and the talking points in that last match that we saw. Of course, Danny Lauby coming out 4-3 winner over Nathan Gervin, a 90 average from Lauby in that one. 6 140 plus visits and a checkout percentage of 36.36, giving you two decimal places there that's a nod to Chris Mason of course we are now going to discuss the controversial moment in that match Chris Murphy I heard you in commentary just saying that it wasn't a throw we're going to watch the we're going to watch it back now are you sticking by that comment because he throws the first one perfect in the treble 20 second one follows and then he just drops his dart doesn't he yeah I, he throws so fast I had to see it again but now I've seen it again I'm confident that it's not a throw now rule 5.2.2 in the DRA rule book says that each dart must be thrown over arm and deliberately. The crucial word there is deliberately, and for me that wasn't thrown deliberately, but I think he's done himself a little bit here, Danny Lauby. Because it's difficult for a referee to see, isn't it? They're looking at the board. And when you watch Lauby's reaction, he kind of was the one who reacted before Paul Hinks had called the 120. So I think he'd done himself a little bit there, because Hinks might have turned around, looked at him, and thought, oh, he's thrown that because of the way that he reacted himself. But by the letter of the law, that dart should have been allowed to be thrown again. Yeah, and when you watch it back, you do look at his reaction and you think because of the way he's reacted, he's kind of made himself look quite guilty. But it was quite interesting as well seeing Nathan Gervin's reaction because he kind of took a step back. He didn't know whether Lauby was going to be allowed to throw that dart again. I think there was just a lot of confusion up on yeah, that stage. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I almost thought he was going to offer to see if he could let him throw it again at one point. But yeah, he didn't do any damage in the end. He won that leg, didn't he? Went on to win the match as well. So no harm done, but it's just incredible the different things you see in a game where the variables never change. And I guess one of the main reasons that does happen is, like you said, because of the speed in which he throws. Yeah, absolutely. And you do we see the best player in the world, Gerwin Price, <laughs> fumbles his darts more than anybody, doesn't he? Um, but yeah, it was a, a really strange moment and maybe he just needs to work on that kind of puppy dog guilt in future and he might be able to get another go. Are you going to be able to help him with that? <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Absolutely right. Let's get into our next match then. It is Sebastian Biowetsky up against Stefan Belmont. Thank you very much, Abby. Really, really interesting discussion up on the balcony with yourself and Chris Murphy. Plenty of talking points then on this opening day of Group A action here at the Modus Super Series. But what it does do in terms of the group, it creates a split in the middle. Three players on four points, three players on two points. Kelling, Lauby, Biowetsky are all on four. Gerben, Belmont and Small are all on two. The Swiss is looking to join that pack on four with victory here against Biowetsky. He won two of his opening three games. He opened up his account with a 4-3 victory against Alex Small before then backing it up with a 4-1 success over Lauby, who we've seen just now, before then being First defeated 4-3 by Alec Small. Game on. It's Biowetsky with the darts which has won most of the games, all bar two so far today. Biowetsky being one of the players to win against the darts in that success against Small. We saw that Cathlon in Belmont's last game. 4 3, he lost to the Welshman Small with One all seven legs 14. going against the darts. As Belmont had the, I suppose, eventually disadvantage of throw in that one. 85. I'm happy to say that the Gary Neville of Darting Punditry has returned back down to the commentary box. Cleared everything up for you there, Henry? I think so. Yeah, having seen it back, uh, we, we were kind of right the first time, weren't we, that Danny kind of just dropped his dart. And of course, you can give your opinion on it as well at MSS Darts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can See the clip back for yourselves, and you can cast your judgment. Yeah, you can disagree with me if you like, but you would have the unfortunate disposition of being wrong. 
Anyway, treble 20 for the ball here. Not going to happen. 90. Goes for the ball anyway to tilt. The finish. Probably was looking at the wrong score there. Can't be on everything, Murph. From Gary to Phil. Stefan Yulvar, 71. Uh, 71 for Belmont, went treble 13. We do say pride becomes before a fall, Henry, don't they? Double top. James Belmont gets it right. Stefan Belmont. Can't be right 100% of the time, Chris. No, I was wrong once before as well, back in 2003, I think. Second leg, Stefan to throw first. Game on. So what you're saying, there's two opinions, Chris's one and the wrong one. Well, no, there are facts, aren't they? There are facts and opinions, and facts can't be argued with. And 60. The analysis on that, I don't even want to call it a throw, because that wouldn't be a fact, would it? But yeah, one of those things. Hoist by his own petard. I do think, though, he was hoist 95. by his own petard, because one, it was the speed of which he retrieves a dart, and two, the, uh, the guilty look that he had on his face when Paul Hinks probably turned around and looked at him and thought, oh, he's done something wrong there. Let's punish him. Anyway, back to the darts that are going in the board. And that one's found its intended target. 100. We are approaching the, the two-thirds stage of the evening. We'll have at the end of this match, Henry, who's, uh, who's stood out for you so far? 56. Interesting because I think we've seen a little bit of everything from everyone thus far. We've mentioned the consistency of Kelling in this event so far, but 84. in the first round of, pick, of, of fixtures, everybody kind of came out the tracks firing, and then it's just kind of deviated since. And I think it makes it 100. difficult as a consequence to really pick anybody out as a standout contender because. With all due respect, we don't quite know what we're going to get 98. from anyone so far today, apart from Jamie Kelling, who is averaging around the mid-80s mark most of the time. 43. Kelling will be in action the next against Nathan Gervin, his 100th match here for the Super Series. Doesn't have to go treble 18, but... With the treble 20 blocks, there was no 50. kind of value in not doing. Would have been the last start he would have had to think about. 50. Interesting situation in this 96. group, isn't it? If Belmont manages to win 74. this match, you'd have four players on four with the possibility of all the players being on four after match 12. Okay, this... For 1-1. One, one. 54. Stefan Yulkar, 88. This is for a 2-0 lead for the Swissman. 18. Well, he's missed the big number. You've got to ensure the big 18 for the bullseye. It's the first thing I learnt in the Rod Harrington Sebastian lectures at the University of Darts. That's what we call a good marker. But he can't Rose make ball. use of it, and Belmont Stephen now Rose has Rose the chance to double his advantage in this game. Double 16 to do so. He's been a player that's been starting 14. slowly this evening. Sebastian he had a chance to be halfway there. But now, Bioetsky can break. And he still hasn't. No score. He still, still hasn't. It's six missed at double ten. Seven in the leg. Having missed one at tops as well. But there's going to be more opportunities for Bioetsky. The turns for the double ten. He's missed eight darts He's already at a double. He won't leg. miss a ninth. Sebastian and that was a rueful look from Bioetsky as he gets the double in the end.
The two players have a little bit of a laugh and a joke about it. Try and put it to the back of their minds. A sporting fist well, bump as well. First. Game and on. Interestingly, it's a break of throw for Buwetsky as well. Yeah, I wonder how many times he's broken throwing nine visits to the hockey. 96. Probably would every leg against me. <laughs> Yeah, I've never actually seen you throw darts, Henry. Are you uh, 60. able to walk the walk as well as you talk the talk? I'll leave it up to the viewers at home to decide how well he does that, by the way. but <laughs> Let's say I've probably got a better hey, chance at a musical career than a darting career. And he is bad. He's bad at music. If you want to uh, get your windows taken out, just get Henry to sing in your living room. 100. Never got any bookings. What Although, was the, what was the uh, the song? Oh, it let me entertain you, and he certainly didn't. Fifty-nine. Anyway, moving on. Well, that, actually, 100. to be fair, Henry, your singing will probably rival this match for entertainment at the moment. I had the crowd on their feet. I'll have you know, Murph. Yeah, walking out. <laughs> 60. Was, that wasn't what you said the other day. Although, you have a little bit of a darting trophy cabinet starting to emerge. Yeah, but I'm too modest to reveal it on air, Henry. Well, they're starting to get going, or at least Bierwetzki is here. 139. Step on your car, 141. Well, sometimes the, the games that are a bit of a slog are the most important ones to win. 105. Sebastian Ocar, 62. And this is a big moment for Bioetsky, potentially. Double 16. 30. Step on your car, 36. I haven't seen... Doubles cleaned up easily in this game. Is that awkward or does it help? Game well, he's thrown straight at it and gone straight in it. So there's the answer. And it's a 2-1 lead for Belmont, who breaks back and takes back control of the contest. Well, virtually, he just had to aim at that first dart there, didn't he? If he could aim at that, it was a nice enough guy that he could just crash it off the first into the second. I suppose almost avalanche-like for the man from the Alps. 57. Yeah, it's been a, a bit of a struggle for Sebastian at times tonight, and certainly in this match. 99. 99. A decent score for him. It has to be said, he's had four ton plus visits, no 140s, no 180s in the first three legs. 100. In comparison. Belmont has thrown in nine scores of 100 or more, including a 140. It only finds himself a leg in front. How much does Belmont's experience in his older years come into play here in a, in a game like this where both players haven't hit the heights that he can just find a way of just going through the required gears to get the victory? 140. He, he does have the air of a man who is comfortable in this some players, and particularly younger players, are very, very concerned One about how well they play easy. and are obsessed over averages, obsessed over maximum counts, of which Biwetskis is now one after that visit. But sometimes forget the most important bit is to win. Treble 18 and Ball would have ensured in the win 92. in this leg. Step on your car, 100. On 19, then, for Belmont to back the break out of a hold and open up a 3 1 lead. But he's hit the single free. And that's the second time in this match 41. where Sebastian McCarthy, going for a combination, he's missed the big number. Is it going to go and cost him here? He got away of it last time. 16. And he may get Step away of it car, again. 78. Yeah, this is a real dose of double trouble. 
He's missed a dozen now, Biowetsky. And Tops would see Belmont extend his lead, but he's 16. unable to do so. And if he hits one of these darts in the required segment, which he has, on the fourth leg. Biowetsky's Biowetsky. got to think, I'm playing terribly here. I'm playing terribly. I've missed 12 darts at double, yet somehow it's still two all. He knows if he just goes up one gear, then he'll win the match. Sebastian to throw first, game on. He's just trying to get his game out of the darting gutter at the minute, isn't he? Yeah, and, and of course, uh, people may be watching thinking, you know, it's a harsh assessment, but we only judge players by their own standard. And we've seen so much better from this man. 60. He's a player who's reached the quarterfinals at the UK Open. He's a player who's hit a nine data there the year before. He's a player that we were really excited about having here and that many people are really excited about having in the future of this sport. He's averaging now, after four and a half legs, 82, and that's coming up. 140. His kind of mean average across all of the games on record for him is closer to 88. So he is playing below par, but he was playing a long way below par until this leg, really. And credit where credit's due, because as you say, we were asking both of the players the same question. Who's going to find the levels? Who's going to find the gears? It feels as if on the back of back-to-back -back 140s, Biowetsky is the one who has. It doesn't have to even contemplate the balls I hear with Belmont back on... 201 so leaves himself 32 after 12 for a 3-2 lead and maybe he's discovered his game at the perfect time well we'll know the answer 57 to that so ball if this goes straight in the double because that has been the big problem Game shot on the not straight leg. in Sebastian but in Biowetsky. all the same and Biowetsky leads the match 3-2 with a 15 data to just settle himself down a little. He's lifted. Belmont has not. Like to throw first. Now, I'm not Game a pro on. by any stretch of the imagination, but watching Biowetsky's darts at double 16 in this game, I think the way he releases them and it enters the board, 16. I think it obscures the target, and he's then having to pick a corner one or either side. So when two miss, to be fair, that was a really good third dart because he's probably got about... 10% of the target area to aim at. Yeah, I think it's a fair assessment. It's the, the sort of the exaggerated way of describing it is throwing them sideways, isn't it? And that, that kind of appears that way sometimes. But 60. maybe he needs to look at which doubles he leaves. It makes it more difficult for himself. Having said that, the, the opposite of that would be that he would leave a very, very inviting double 100. 10. And we saw him struggle on that at the start of the match. But of course, he's in that period of his career. He's only 18. He's only going to improve. And I suppose he could perhaps copy Moreno Blom's example last week of using this as, as work experience. And anything that he does this week is, is, is an absolute bonus. And I think that's something that any young player who plays 100. in this tournament, and, and even an experienced young player like Nathan Gervin, to, to a certain extent, could possibly follow that mantra. Eighty-one. One hundred. Well, leaves himself one hundred and sixteen. Looks likely to get over the line, and he has put together a couple of good legs. Fifty-five. Sebastian McCall, one hundred and sixteen. From two-two. He certainly upped his game. It's going to take a magical moment from Belmont. 60. Seven to stem the tide. And in honesty, hasn't looked likely, has it? And so Biowetsky will return for 56 for a 4 2 victory. And to become 56. the first man in this group to get onto six points. He's got two darts at tops.
Game show and he gets match. there. Sebastian and Sebastian Biowetsky is the first player on to six points here in Group A at the Moda Super Series, courtesy of a 4-2 victory against the excellent Swiss Stefan Belmont. It was one of those attritional battles in the end, but Biowetsky won't care. Biowetsky won't mind. He's got the two points to his name. He moves himself on to six. We are going to see after this short break whether Jamie Kelling can get there as well as he takes on Nathan Gervin, who's looking to join the party on four points.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here in Portsmouth. We've just seen Sebastian Biowetsky become the first player to move on to six points with that 4-2 victory over Stefan Belmont. It wasn't a classic, it was a bit of a slog at times. Biowetsky, as you can see on the screen there, even though he got over the line, yet more missed darts at the outer ring. 15 darts missed at double in that one. That will be a concern for the Polish youngster who also missed nine darts at a double, had a 10% checkout percentage in his previous match before that one. So a bit of a concern, a bit of work to do for the Polish youngster who hasn't really shown us his A game yet. We've been really excited to see him up on that stage, to see if he can replicate the things we've seen from him, of course, at the UK Open and on other stages as well. But we're yet to see it. We might see it before the end of play tonight, but if not, he will, of course, be back in action for two more days after today as Group A plays out over Tuesday and Wednesday. A reminder that we'll be back to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, so make sure you set your alarms for that one. But coming up next, it's Nathan Gervin taking on the man who's probably been playing the most consistent darts this evening in Jamie Kelling. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out in the company of Chris Murphy and first Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Abby. As we see the George Russell of the Super Series on the hockey, Mr. Consistency himself, Jamie Kelling in action up against Nathan Gervin, the young whippersnapper from our both. Two players who have come bursting onto the scene. Jamie Kelling now 33 years of age, reaching what some would say would be the peak age of a darts player's career. Nathan Gervin has got many years left in the sport, age 19, and has had a fantastic 2022. That is for certain. He's 36 in the Challenge Tour Order of Merit for 2022, like he's but he's 7th in the Development Tour Order of Merit. Yeah. And if you actually look at uh, the Development Tour Order of Merit, he's actually the top player outside the places of players who've got a tour card. So he could be a PDC player come the start of 2023. 140. Yeah, maybe uh, a future star, but we've said that about many, haven't we? 60. Kelling himself, one of the players that you mentioned in that new kids on the hockey program many moons ago, along with Aaron Monk and 100. Michael Smith, who, of course, has gone on to be the star of the sport. Although yet to win that major. 140. And did win that major. Another participant on that. The X factor of darts. Britain's got tungsten talent. 100. Well, they should have called it. Well, now you're a Saturday Night TV host, Murph. Maybe you should uh, get your CV in. Nathan Newcastle, 161. 161 for Gervin after nine. And off to the better start of the two with the darts. 49. 100, Nathan Carr, 112. 88, Jamie Carr, 156. Gervin in a good spot. And we'll come back for the darts, the double 12. 100, Nathan Carr, 24. Lost out to Stefan Belmont, Belmont rather earlier in the evening. Double six. Game shot on the first leg. Takes the first Gervin. leg against Jamie Kelling, who also lost his first match of the night, but has been excellent since then in terms of results. Ball woman against like Jamie to throw Seb Biowetsky. And a 4-2 win against the aforementioned Belmont. Gerben 60. defeated Alex Small 4-1, but lost out 4-3 against Danny Lauby in that match that Involved the ghost darts that social media will be talking what about. You might be talking about that visit. There will be if he hits another one and then a 1-4-1. One, 1. 60. He's hit one. 
on the players' championship circuit already, a nine dart leg, this youngster. One oh, and he almost, almost teased the prospect of perfection there. You could see the disappointment etched on his face. Well, it looked as if as he released that dart, his 100. reaction was, didn't quite release it as I wanted to. It felt as if he pulled it a little bit. So this has been an excellent leg up until that point where it may just open the door for Kenny, but he's going to have to get something big here. It was against Adrian Lewis, in fact, no less 60. than nine data that was hit by Gerben back 170. in May this year when he was filling up spots on the Pro Tour. Is he filling up tops on the Super Series? He's yes, he is. 117 to double his lead. And it is glorious Gervin so far. Absolutely destroying Jamie Kelling They're in like the early exchanges in this match. Poor old Jamie hasn't had Game a on. dart at double in either of the first two legs. And this, Henry, in his 100th Super Series match. Indeed, the century up for Jamie Kelling. 60. There was a crowd in here. We would be giving him the round of applause. One of the stalwarts of this competition, one of the regulars of this competition, has been here since the very first week since we 60. moved into the studio set up in Southampton. So he's been there from the COVID time to this exciting new era. But talking Thank about exciting new eras in the world of darts, you sense Nathan Gervin is going to be a part of many eras to come. And it's been majestic from him so far. 100. Well, 350. It's a 181.70, is it? It's done actually less frequently than a nine dart finish that. Some could argue that's actually a better achievement than a, than a nine dart leg. Well, they could argue that. They'd be wrong. 100. Finds himself on the Benno. And looking to open up a 3-0 lead. 85. What is but the, again, what a is, snatch. What is the best achievement in darts? Is it, do you think there's something that hasn't been done yet? Is it going to be somebody hitting the 130 average mark is it going to be someone doing the nine dart leg a spectacular way with three one six sevens i think the one that always sticks out in terms of achievements because we're so close to seeing it's probably the back-to-back -back nines yeah. i think oh, that one stands three. out of course we're talking about a particular leg or a particular shot mm -hmm. here not obviously the best achievement is winning the world championship but in terms of could win a world championship with a nine dart leg. Oh, so yeah, that would be 54. something special. But I think Gervin would settle here for a 54 finish to go 3 0 up at the Super Series. That slip actually Jamie Carr, ended up allowing him to go for his favourite double, didn't it? But couldn't find it. Kelling couldn't find either of the two 91. trebles he needed when he Nathan needed Carr, them. 16. So therefore, wasn't afforded a dart at the bolt and still hasn't been afforded a dart at any double Game in this match a match he trails by three legs and the difference is there to see in terms of the averages there's a 14 point swing between the pair like jamie to throw first game on i've seen of course phil taylor hit two 82. nine darters in the same match that was in the premier league final we saw Michael Van Gerwen hit two nine darters in a match that was at a pro tour. Almost hit two nine darters back to back, didn't he? At the Ali Pali against James Wade in the huge match at a quarter final, I think. Or was it a semi? 100. I think it was. Yes, because it was. Yeah, Van Gerwen beat Wade because he beat Lewis in the quarter finals, didn't he? That year. And Lewis was defending champion. A yep, fantastic yep, match. Correct. Yeah, semi final against James Wade. Almost back to back nine darters. Missed double 12 for 45. it. Don't think anyone's been close since. And the legendary tones of John Gwynn, who sadly is no longer with us. We uh, send our thoughts to his family, and we always think so fondly of John's brilliant 100. moments behind microphones just like this one. I know you had the pleasure of spending a little bit of time with him in February at the seniors. Yeah, he called in Robert Thornton's uh, World 100. Championship victory at the Circus Tavern. Uh, 
And I know that, that Michael Van Gerwen one was a, a real favourite commentary moment of his. But it's been Nathan Van Gerwen at the start of this match. Although that is uh, less spectacular because he's got his sums wrong there. 41. More PVT. 17s was a shot. Angry darts, though, so, weren't they? You could see the little snarl in the Scotsman's face. He was akin to his fellow Scott Gary Anderson there, and maybe similar to Gary Anderson. He can wrap up a victory to nil if he can convert double 16 with his 16th dart of the fourth leg. Sixteen. But he goes Daniel inside and Kenning four. returns. He may get his first dart at double in this match. Eighteen roots. Okay, trouble one. And we he may not get a dart at double in the match. And I think that's Andy Daniel Jenkins back in here banging on the door outside asking for those darts back. Game because Nathan Gervin has used them to great effect. A four nil whitewash win and Jamie Kelling's one hundredth match at the Super Series ends in a crushing defeat in which he didn't even throw a dart at double. Gervin gets the better of him. That 117 check out the highlight. The checkouts were the strong part of his game as well. Missed a handful of darts at double at the end there, but a 44.44% success race rates even. Sees him win the race by four legs to nil.
Hello and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. We've just seen our first whitewash win of the evening. Nathan Girvan with the 4-0 victory over Jamie Kellen. And as you can see the stats on the screen there, Jamie Kellen in his 100th match at the Super Series, not even allowed a dart at double. Such was Nathan's dominance in that one. Four out of nine, 44 percent on the outer ring. Really clinical from the young Scotsman. Now let's have another look at the table heading into our last few matches of the evening. A few changes in there. It's Alex Small who's at the bottom of the table. Of course, he's about to take to the stage against Danny Lauby, who sat third on four points. Three players on four points. And as we said, after his last victory, Sebastian Biowetsky is the only player at the moment on six points. He's sat top of the table, but plenty of work still for the Polish player to do because of his trouble on the outer ring. Right then, let's get into this match. It is Alex Small up against Danny Lauby. Let's hand it back over to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, a big game for Small here. Probably bigger for him than it is for Danny Lauby. He could find himself cut adrift if he does not manage to get a victory here or, or in his final match of the night, which will be our final match of the night against Jamie Kelling. Kelling, who, as Abby just described, lost 4 0 in his 100th match. Not a memorable one for him. We had a memorable moment in that Danny Lauby match earlier on. It's uh, now been widely talked about on social media, but didn't affect the game in the end, the drop dart that was called as a dart. And Danny Lauby went on to get first leg is Alex to throw first against Naven Gervin. And we've just seen Game that on. that's no mean feat because Gervin was excellent in that whitewash win over Kelling. Indeed he was. He may have just played his way into form at the perfect time. Can these two play themselves back into form at the perfect time? Danny Lauby got the show on the road tonight and in brilliant style with a 96.62 average, hitting 3 180s in that 4-1 victory against Jamie Kelling. He would then go on to lose 4-1 to Sebastian Biowetsky before in his next game, replicating some of the heights that we saw in the opener, averaging 90.05, but it's four from 11 on the doubles, which 44. brought the average down in a 4-3 success against Gervin, who we've just seen whitewash Jamie Kelling a few moments ago. 140. Both players following each other with 40-something scores, but then a two-treble turn from Small keeps him... 82. Aggressive in this game, though that last start there might have just saved him. Lauby has to think about this. 262, a ton won't do. And he should have switched with that second dart. 60. Do you get the sense this is a bigger game for Small than it is for Lauby, just considering the position and predicament 100. in the group? 100%. Yeah, it's early stages in this group. But remember, folks, those of you who watch the Super Series and the Live League before it, only one player qualifies from this group for finals night. So if you find yourself caught 76. adrift after day one, it's very difficult for you to still harbour ambitions of that top spot. This will be 11 for Bull. 46. Danny he decided Lacar to leave double 15 instead. No, I'm joking, he was going for the Bull. Interesting play that from Danny Laub. He went 25 Danny first up. I mean, you could say that interesting is one way of describing it, Henry. That Game was unintentional. He didn't Hall. mean that. He was going for the double 15. He's missed it by such a margin. He's ended up hitting 10 double Don't 10. Like Danny to throw first. Game on. I can't see that being intentional. The way that he was throwing the, the, the first dart and the way they followed, I think the second dart was aimed at double 15. He used the guy perfectly, by the way. That was not the route he was going for. Not another Danny Lauber game which involves a throw, is it? <laughs> Seen some funny things tonight. Our 46. first ever evening's Group A action. And it's certainly not disappointing in the entertainment stakes. One hundred and fifty. Takes more than just... Brilliant, big performance as nine darters to, to create talking 64. points, doesn't it? And we've had a few of those tonight. I don't know whether you're a fan of 90s music, Murph, but maybe you're the same as me. We're seeing things that we've never 78. seen. 
near the Super Series. Yeah, I'm a fan of 90s music, just not terrible puddings. 100. Danny Ricard, 129. Anyway, let's just roll with it. 93. Alec Ricard, well, 170. 170 on offer, but not going to threaten it. 38. Danny Ricard, 36. I'm actually a fan of terrible puns. Double nine. Game shot on the second leg. Danny Lowby. Lowby levels. And that is no laughing matter for Lowby as he does level us up. And as I mentioned, it's a big game for Small. And you mentioned, of course, the, the difference of this group play compared like to, to others. First. There's less yeah. time to think about things. Whereas traditionally in group play, the players will leave the building 45. maybe about two o'clock, half past two. They'd have the rest of their day to themselves. They could maybe just put the darts away, go out for a bit of dinner in the city or something like that. Just relax overnight and then come back with a fresh mindset. But they're going to be finishing 60. maybe about half past 10 to 11, something in that region. And so they're then going to have to go straight back to bed, probably think about it, stew on it for the players, especially who finish at the bottom end of the table overnight. And then they're going to have to wake up 60. first thing tomorrow morning with that probably same mindset that they've gone to, to bed thinking because they've 28. gone straight from the venue to... Their cup of Horlicks and their pyjamas. Sounds quite tempting, that, 96. actually, Henry. One hundred and fourteen. Make sure you get yours, because we will be back bright and early tomorrow, 9.30 a.m., live here on the Modus Super Series YouTube. Steady on, Alec. And then he's managed to Daniel force it through. Yeah, and Sporty Stuff TV as well tomorrow morning. If that's where you usually watch, you will be able to for the rest of the week. Well, that last start went through both the goalposts. He's moved the goalposts for top tops. Daniel Ricard, 36. But the third one clattered out. And that's it. And Lowby. Lowby gets the break. He leads 2-1 against Alex Small. This would put him on to six points after four games. And when you consider he's had an up-and-down night, a oh, helter-skelter kind of game. evening, if he can come out of this with either six or eight points, you could say the rest of the group have been served notice that he's picked up a, a point tally despite maybe not at times hitting the six straps. Eight. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, at some point we will see Lauby have a spell, whether it be a match, 100. two matches, three matches, where we will see him explode and go into overdrive. So if he does find himself in a promising 14. position, then I would think he would be certainly amongst the favourites to go on and seal that finals night spot from this 95. group. But we thought that last week about Conor Hina, and he won all five matches on Tuesday, didn't he? And didn't get the spot. Andy Hamilton's consistency 100. got him over the line. Two days of four out of five. He's better than one of five out of five and then just winning a couple. And I just wonder whether with Danny Lowby, 25. out of all the six players in this scenario, he's the one that's won the most recently. Whether that comes into play, knowing how to get over the line, knowing how to win things, whether that's a distinct advantage for him this week, should he become in a position where he's at the top of the table. 100. I like your car, Small here, looking four. to stop him in his tracks. Goes the 16s route that's becoming ever so popular. It leaves tops, Games he takes it out. Leg. Alex Small. 104 to level the match at 2-2. Two -two. And he has won quite a lot, Danny Lauby. You, you mentioned that the... I like to throw first game on. The titles that he has over in the CDC tour, but I, I do 57. love, you know, I, I mean, danger of going a little bit Paul Nicholson here, but I do love the names of some of the American events. He's been a winner of the Music City Classic, the Cleveland Extravaganza, and the Cherry Bomb International, Danny Lowby. They sound like names of local newspapers, don't they? <laughs> Although, to be fair, it'd be about right Danny Lowby wins the Music City Championships. 139. Well, it hasn't been all singing or dancing for Lowby so far this evening, but 
58. Maybe the final symphony will be just the right one, just the right notes. He's in a good position here to break, having been broken with that brilliant 104. Daniel Carr, 139. Uh, Gerwin Price, the man who's really made that route popular in recent years. 44. Congratulations to him, of course, winning the World Series finals last night in Amsterdam. 140. Daniel Carr, 95. Choices here, 95. The Dolly Parton shot. The ball. Game shot <laughs> Just of the Just waiting for Daniel Albee. Paul Hinks to confirm that, but it was sweet as a note. The bullseye by Danny Lowby, and he does work it out very, very nicely Looks indeed. Like a brilliant break first. back. Game on. And a bullseye finish always looks that little bit more spectacular, doesn't it? And you know what? Hitting 95, what a 96. way to make a living. You walked into that one. <laughs> you meant to save that for when he actually wins the money game at the end, or if he wins the money game at the end of the week. And what a prize it is as well. £5,000 for the weekly winner. That was picked up by Conan 98. Whitehead here on Saturday night. But perhaps more importantly, playing in that Champions Week. And Champions Week is exactly that now at the Super Series because it's 83. only one place on offer each week. So all of the 12 darters battling out this week, it will, week, it will all come Wonder. down to the very last match to see which one of them is in contention for the £20,000 first prize on week 13 of the first. Motor Super Series. And as you say, it makes the final the most important game of the night, which it should be in the previous format as Danny Lauby is frustrated with that pull into the single five. Sometimes 75. we'll look at it the third, fourth place playoff because the players who made the final were automatically in. I'll tell you what, his ball hitting's not been bad. He's finished Daniel on Carl the ball. He's just hit the ball to leave this. Now he wants two balls for double 16. There's one of them. Oh, and he almost got another. Well, he was on for four bullseyes on the spin there. I like your car, I think the issue there was the first dart blocked basically the rest of the bed. As really, he could have been a little bit, a little bit more pragmatic, couldn't he, and gone for a, a treble 14, Daniel for example. He actually hit a treble 17 and left double three. Now, really, the shot is two double two. Now he has to go double no three. Score. I like your car, 74. And the first dart, again, akin to the bull, completely blocked the bed. He didn't have much to... Go for it. Small has tops. 54. Goes just below Daniel tops. And so Lauby will return for six. But will he go the same way? Game Straight in. Match, no Lauby. problem. And it is the match for Danny Lauby. He completes a 4-2 success. Some big moments in there. A 104, the highlight for Alex Small. But it is another defeat for the Welsh youngster who will sit at the bottom of the table after that. The 95 for Danny Lauby on the ball. The real moment of the match for him and he is looking in a very strong position with one more match to play this evening for all of the players starting with Nathan Gervin against Sebastian Biawetsky that's coming next
Good evening and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here in Portsmouth. We've got three more matches for you this evening, but we've just seen Danny Lauby move on to six points in the group level with Sebastian Bierkowski. So with that, he's on to six points level at the top of the table without really showing any of his best stuff. We know that there's so much more in the tank for him. Let's have a little look at those match stats then. 85% Aver 85 average, sorry, not percent. His highest checkout, 95. It was a crucial 95, wasn't it, on the bullseye. That really put him in a commanding position in that one. As for Alex Small, the 104, a real highlight for him in that match. He didn't really play badly, perhaps just not consistently enough in that match. But coming up for you next, as we move into our final round of games this evening, we have Nathan Girvin, who completed a 4-0 whitewash in his last match up against Sebastian Biakowski, who missed 24 darts at double in his last two matches combined. So Nathan will come into this one feeling like he's got a chance despite the Polishman sitting on six points at the moment. A good chance for Nathan to join them at the top of the crop. So to talk you through this one, the players are up on the stage ready to get going. We've got Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Thank you, Abby. And it is a glimpse into the darting future here as Nathan Gervin takes on Sebastian Bielwetski, a combined age of 37 on the stage for this one. As we see this year's UK Open quarter finalist, Sebastian Bielwetski did it as a Riley's amateur qualifier up against Nathan Gervin, age 19, from Arbro. Twice a BDO Youth Championship one up. Two stars of the future, very much showing us what they can do in the present. This is a big game for both, you feel, as we head towards the latter ends of the opening day's action in Group A. If Bioetsi can get a victory here, he would put a four-point gap to Gervin going into the beginning of the final round of fixtures. Second, He'd go two to points first. above Lauby, who is alongside him at the Game top on. on six points, both actually level in terms of points and leg difference, both plus three in that particular department. Then it's Gervin Kelly on four, and then the Belmont and Small are both on two following the conclusion of four of our five rounds we're going to see today. So it is second out round five, our final round. Not quite the championship rounds yet. We're still feeding everything out in terms of this week's action in group 128. a and of course if you are enjoying the action do send us a tweet we are at mss darts on facebook twitter and instagram and do have your say on that on some of the brilliant moments we've seen today and some of the real talking points we've seen in our first ever 6 p.m session at the super Thank series you. i'd like to hear from you but keep your comments fun keep your comments clean One hundred and forty. Is that one forty from Bielwetski? Edges him closer to a finish, but it's still advantage Gervin in this opening leg with the darts. Very much so after that one forty. One hundred and thirty-seven. Nathan Gal one hundred and seventeen. So Gervin first to a finish on one seventeen. Show nineteen for tops. Tops it is. I think there's a bit of a, a disturbance on stage there. The insects. The insects. Glass in your car, 86. And it did its job. The fly you released from your pocket, Sebastian. Game shot on the first leg. Tag team. Biowetsky. Nicks the opening leg. I thought someone opened their wallet to get a cup of coffee for us, to be honest. Like Sebastian throwing first, game on. Whose turn's that tomorrow, Murph? Yours. 43. Milk, two sugars. It was actually, it's always my turn tomorrow, just never today. 58. 
100. Interestingly, this is the 93. first ever recorded meeting between this pair, which does surprise me a little bit when you consider that they've been around the same darting circus for a little while now on the development tour. And 100. Both have played bits on the WDF circuit. Bielewetski has qualified for the WDF World Championships courtesy of winning the Denmark Open earlier on 96. this year. And talking about WDF winners, we must say good evening to James Richardson, who won the British Classic at the weekend. He, uh, he's been in touch with us this evening. 58. Big Ipswich Town fan is James. Well, yeah, well, Ipswich Town were 2 0 up at the weekend, I believe, and ended up drawing 2 2. Eighty-one. Nathan Carl, one hundred and fifty-four. So one five four for Gervy. He's going to go two treble nineteens for this. Very much the modern way. Sebastian Carl, one. I do like that route on the one six four. The two treble nineteens so far. I think it's much better than the treble twenty treble eighteen combo. But Bioetsky wants tops for the one nineteen combo 99. to open up Nathan a Carl, two nil lead. So Gervin is going to return for the one twelve. Triple 20. Would have left him a dart at double 16. So Bioetsky returns for double 10. It's also a matter of anger again then Game from Nathan Gervin, and he will be a seething Scotsman now as Bioetsky doubles his lead in this contest. Third like Nathan to throw first. Game on. And so Gervin's going to have to do it from behind here. Sixty. Victory here would open up a four-point gap between the pair for Bioretsky. Put him on to eight. Gervin would be left stranded on four overnight. Sixty. And as I say, usually you can separate the Monday from Tuesday, but the way this week is occupied in these circumstances, you'll think about everything. And is that a route back into the match for Nathan Gervin? Has he 55. picked out his darting map and found the road to success against Bioetsky? 91. Well, are we seeing that? You, you mentioned it earlier on. Are we seeing that Anderson like streaking in Nathan Gervin? He One out of gets 40. himself Nathan all Carl riled Robert up and then starts producing his best stuff. Don't make him angry. You wouldn't like him when he's 98. angry. He's wearing green, so perhaps appropriate. Ninety-four. Nathan Cross, seventy-two. The twelve. Green shot on the third. Located. Gervin. And Gervin is back in the match after telling himself off. Both like Sebastian to throw first. Game on. So Bioetsky with the advantage of throw then in leg four. Looking to open up a 3-1 lead 85. in this particular game. Ninety-five. Apparently, referee, uh, sorry, a um, Aberdeen fan is Nathan Curvin. Maybe a fan of memories, I don't know. But. 100. Real, some real vigour in his throw at the moment. 140. 60. Should be coming down at some point in this visit. That point is now. 58. Here's himself on 2 8 after 9. 60. Are they still the last Scottish 60. team to win a European honour, Aberdeen? You're asking the wrong person, Henry. 
I only think about darts. 134. Eat, sleep, darts, repeat is the Murphy mantra. And friends and family, of course, if you're watching. 94. Nathan McGrath, 74. Carol, 14. Doesn't like the lie. Two thirds of the bed to aim at. Left hand side. And Green he's found it. And Nathan you mentioned Miller. it earlier, Henry. I must just tilt my cap towards you. You said sometimes it's best just to take a moment, just to step back. And Gervin did that there, and it proved Reflect to be very, Nathan very effective. First. Game on. She had a lot of darting maturity there from the 19 year old, but. In fairness, he's, he's a 19-year-old player who's got maturity beyond his years. He's been on our TV screens for a number of years. But we've got the experience or similar experience to 85. players who are probably about 26, 27. That's how good he is. That's how experienced he is. He may be a tour card holder 100. next year, courtesy of his development tour exploits. One hundred and twenty five. Ninety three. Pureski needs a big score. It's just gone a little bit cold for him at the minute. Gervin's just 85. like a so like a swan serenely moving towards this fifth leg. Yeah, it's, it's becoming a a big match, isn't it? Bielecki with victory here would actually end the evening on eight points and would certainly be at least joint top of the table. It would be a, a step closer to seeing the pole dancing at the live lounge on Wednesday. Nathan Ufall, 40. But the Scotsman out to stop him. And don't forget, he Green trailed this match by Nathan two legs to nil. He's turned the tables totally here. And he's doing it with an average of 95.25. And this is a huge credit here to Gervin. That 95 just, it doesn't feel like a 95. That's how business like he's going about things here. 25. We're coming towards the, the final straight of the evening's action. And remember, we will be back at 9.30 a.m. here on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel and live on Sporty Stuff TV. What have we learned? so far this evening about this field of six, Henry. That they're incredibly difficult to prize apart. But I do think tomorrow, if someone can just find something early on, just find another gear, they could possibly take control of this group. There's no hegemony at the minute. Somebody could do just that with a good run at the start. Well, it was looking like Gervin was going to run away at the end of this match, but suddenly Bielecki is back in business. He has left himself 136 after just nine darts in what he hopes is the penultimate leg of the match. As you mentioned, this game is just quietly seesawed once again. And Bielecki got pretty much all the time that he wants at tops. To make it free a piece, and Nathan Gervin perhaps is going to have to recompose himself ahead of a last leg shootout where he would have the advantage of throw. Game and he's going to have to do just, just that because Bielecki finds the tops, and we go to a seventh and deciding leg, and it's Gervin with the darts. How big is this leg in the context of seventh this final group? Leg is Nathan to throw first. Game on. Sebastian Bielecki sits on six points. Nathan Gervin, two behind him. They will be level at the end of the evening if the Scotsman holds his throw. The other outcome would see Bielecki go top of the table, at okay. least temporarily, ahead of Danny Lauby's match against Stefan Belmont. Belmont and Small in desperate need of victories in their closing games of the night. 123. Those games could completely change the whole dynamic of the group. Belmont and Small are both on two. Gervin's trying to get on to six. He will if he can win this 
deciding leg. If Lowry beats Bellman, he gets on to eight. If Kelling beats Small, he's on to six. And then you're going to see gaps beginning to develop in the group. If both of them can win their remaining matches, and if Gervin won this one, well, we're going to have a grandstand Tuesday here. Are we having a grandstand finish here? And is Gervin running towards the finishing line here? One hundred. And he should be the first to a double. Rescued the shot 84. somewhat there. Leaves a tidy turn. Oh, but pressure could be applied. One hundred. And that is pressure with a capital P. That's the worst possible dart for Nathan Gervin. Sebastian Bielecki is going to return for two match darts. 40. Sebastian, you're, you're right, 56. anywhere else on the board, he would have still had a chance. But Bielecki gets an unexpected opportunity. One more dart at the top 36. of the shot, but he falls Nathan short. 60. And having trailed this match 2 0, Nathan Gervin now has the chance to complete. The Tartan Tungsten turnaround. Tops for the turnaround. Game and there it match. is. Nathan and Gerber. Nathan Gervin went through the gears to seal a 4 3 victory against Sebastian Bioretsky, and it will set up a grandstand finish to our opening day here in Group A. It really does set the table in stone. Let's have a look then at the stats on this game. 89 average for Gervin, four from six on the doubles, with a high out of 74. He joins the party on six points. Coming up after the break, Danny Lowby will have the opportunity to go outright leader of the group if he can beat Stephen Belmont after this. Good evening and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. We've got two more matches to bring you tonight. We've just seen Nathan Gervin win a last leg decider to put him on six points in Group A. How crucial a victory could that be in the context of Group A? There you can see the stats on the screen. A 90 average for Nathan Gervin, Sebastian Biawetsky. 
averaging 93.3. No 180s from the Polishman. Again, some troubles on the outer ring, but a better checkout percentage. But Nathan Gervin with nearly 67% on the outer ring. A really controlled performance from 2-0 down, remember, in that match. It was really impressive the way that he grew into that game and really settled himself from that losing position. But we've got two more matches remaining, as I just mentioned. Danny Lauby is in action. He is, of course, the other player on six points in Group A. He takes on Stefan Belmont in our penultimate game of the evening. Belmont looking for just his second victory of the night in this one. Can he cause an upset? We've already seen a few already this evening. I'm not going to make any predictions. Are you going to make any, lads? I'm just going to sit back, relax and enjoy it because, do you know what, I don't think there's many more things I'd like to enjoy on a Monday night than being sat in the company of Chris Murphy talking about some darts. It's much better than watching Miss Marple, that's for sure. The pleasure is all yours, Henry. <laughs> and I'm going to go for Danny Lau before Stefan Belmont. Two. Can't be clearer than that. Lauby looking to lead the league table at the end of the opening evening. Does tomorrow count as the opening morning? We haven't had a morning session yet, so I'll go with it. Well, when 9.30 comes, Lauby could put a couple of points between himself and the rest of the field. First leg is Danny of course, could end up stranded at the bottom should Alex Small get a victory Game over on. Jamie Kelling in the last match of the night. So two games still to come here. Well, the one. question here is... Will Belmont suffer the Monday Blues and will Lauby be leading overnight? And it is a short turnaround. They'll be, oh, in about 12 hours' time, 66. they'll be midway through their second game of their second session. That is how quickly this week is going to go for them. Yeah, I'm just glad we get to share the commentary, Henry. And I've decided, 83. actually, a better way of doing it tomorrow is you do the first seven matches. Happy with that? And I'll come in for the, for the last eight. Do what you like, Chris. 100. Still you around on the coffees. I do like watching Danny Lauby. I have to admit, he does make some mistakes. 41. He throws very fast, but sometimes his counting doesn't catch up with his throwing. Is that something you find a bit more with a quicker player? Because they're going a bit quicker. 59. The numbers can sometimes fry the brain. Not necessarily. I think some of the quickest players in the world are the best counters in the world. See Yellow Class and see Michael Smith. I think it's an aspect of your game. If you are going to throw quickly, then you should be working on sharpening up. But you you only learn from your mistakes. 140, Daniel Carr, 161. 57. Step on your car, 136. Then it's a game in which counting matters more in shorter formats such as this. I wonder which way Lauby will go for this 104. 60. The approved route Daniel seems to be 16s these days, and he looks to be going somewhere down to the southwest. Now he should probably change his route. It's an awkward life for a lefty. Really 41. awkward life for a lefty. And so Belmont returns to 76. Looking to bookend his day with victories. This top should be some way to go way. about Stephen it. Belmont. And he breaks Danny Lauby in the opening leg. Does Stefan Belmont. And a perfect tops. Right in the middle to bottom end of the bed. Second leg seven to throw and first. Game on. Well. That is how it lies at the minute. But will Lauby lie at the top of the table overnight? That is the question we're about to find out. If he loses this match, he will be behind Nathan Gervin on leg difference. If he wins the match, he'll be ahead of everybody on points. Six two in. ahead of Gervin and Piowetsky. Jamie Kelling could also get to six if he can get the better of the other debutant of the trio, Alex Small, who's just got one win this evening. That was 100. over Belmont. What have you learnt about Stefan Belmont this evening? Or 
due to the nature of this group tonight, is it hard to kind of read a player based on this evening's proceedings? He's, he looks very unanimated, very business-like, very pedestrian. Warm Sometimes very good. Uh, and, I, and I think he shook off that slow starter tag after the first couple of matches. He seems to have adapted a little bit better to playing on the stage. But if you look at his his performances throughout the evening, he's yet to really lift off, isn't he? Uh, slow start in his first couple of games. One he got away with, one he didn't. And his averages have tended to be, well... 58. Mid-80s. Sometimes low 70s. I certainly don't think we've been the best of Belmont. This could be better from Belmont. He it is getting away. better Stephen for Belmont. Belmont. And he leaves Lowby by two legs to nil. And maybe it's the man who plays in a band who is getting a bit of the blues at the minute. Third leg Danny to throw first. Game on. One out of That's a bit better. I mentioned it earlier, but when you look at all the matches on record for, for Stefan Belmont in various codes, various One out of the tournaments, his, his mean average is around 85. The highest we've ever seen him hit is 103. 83. So the performances he's put in tonight are not indicative of what he usually does. This one is at the high end of the spectrum so far. 93. And maybe this is exactly what he needs to take... What on the ...to Slumberland and snuggle up to. Well, that was free in a bed for Danny Lowby. And at the minute, Bellman's averaging 98. That's above the base we've seen so far. That was Von Lau being the opening game of the night. And now he wants 98. And now he wants 95. And we've seen him take that out. But he needed three darts to do it on that occasion. 42. Stefan, you require 128. 18 segment. The first port of call. Now the 60. Can he push the button? 80. Daniel O'Connor, 56. Couldn't get near it. He gave himself back in the game. 16. That's two vital Daniel darts Carr, missed. 48. And Belmont returns for the double break for 3-0. And this could have huge ramifications in the group. Double 16. Double 8, double 8. It's tricky, isn't it? Because of the light. And that is so, so close. 40. So, so Daniel close. Daniel 40. Unlucky. Double 10. Last chance. 30. May have gone. Seven Belmont Carr, returns eight. for double four. Things are getting interesting very quickly. Three nil Belmont, third. double Seven break Belmont. of throw, and now he's a leg away from a four nil victory against Lauby. Now, is it going to be the curse of the man who's led the group at the beginning of a round? Because the last man to do well, that was Jamie Kelly, and he subsequently went on to lose of a subpar performance to Nathan Gervin for zip. He averaged 75 in that one, Kelling. Lauby at the minute is averaging 77, and Belmont is playing around the levels that we saw from him in that victory he got this against Gervin to start his night. Around 95.69 was his level there. It's 91.92 here. It's much better from the Swiss. And yeah, maybe it's a curse of the commentator as well, because of course I said I'll be with a comfortable win. But based on the stuff you've just said there, Henry, you would expect those averages to have been the other way around and that scoreline to have been the other way around. Lauby's got no idea 100. where his ability's gone in this match. He had a struggle to end his day. He will return tomorrow morning, and those who will be watching him will have a very, very early start. 9.30 in the UK. It's a half-past-three start Eastern time. This is actually the perfect session for our uh, American 
viewers. It was a one o'clock start on the Eastern Seaboard. Uh, very good afternoon slash good evening to those of us, those of you. We might be in the USA. They never know. But to those of you joining us in the United States, and I hope you join us from wherever you are around the world. And of course, good evening to our Swiss viewers who are delving into some late night darting drama. Proper fans will watch whatever time they have 134. to watch. 134. Stefan Jovar, 139. Might not be watching Danny Lauber much longer th this evening because Belmont wants 139 to put him away. And who would have thought he'd have done it in such emphatic style? One last chance for Lauby. Who quite frankly 83. performed Daniel better when he, was when he was only allowed to throw two darts earlier in the evening. Not sure that's the ploy. 152 then to keep his hopes alive, but it goes the other side, and so Belmont to seal a four zip win. 112. Stefan Yoko, 56. Well, who saw this coming? Maybe not even Stefan himself. Game but Belmont the bookends Belmont. the night with a couple of victories. And this one, a 4 0 thrashing of Danny Lauby, who was looking to lead the league table overnight with a win in that one. None of it. Missed all five attempts at doubling the game. And Stefan Belmont took full advantage with his best display of the night to double his points tally at the end of day one. And day one will end after the next match as Jamie Kelling takes on Alex Small. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Just one more match remaining on the opening night of week nine here in Portsmouth. And we've just witnessed possibly the biggest shock result of the evening as Stefan Belmont beat Danny Lauby by four legs to nil. As you can see there, Danny Lauby missing all five of his darts at double. Stefan Belmont, well, we've been saying all evening that we've not really seen the best from him and we've not seen what he he's capable of that was definitely more like the darts we know the Swiss star can produce a much more clinical performance from him to end his night he goes into day two on four points next up to close out the evening we've got Jamie Kelling who of course lost his 100th super series match in his last match 4-0 
to Nathan Gervin. Didn't even get a dart at double in that one. He comes up against Alex Small, the Welshman, looking for just his second win of the evening. To go to sleep a little bit happier this evening going into day two. Just a reminder then before this last match of the evening that we will be back to our normal slot tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. So bright and early for you for our second of three days of Group A action. So to get this one underway, it is Jamie Kellen up against Alex Small in the company once again of Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Yeah, everybody wants to go to sleep happy, but one of these players probably won't, particularly Jamie Kelling, if he does end up losing 4-0 again. And he'll certainly be having nightmares about the new Super Series stage, but it's a nightmare end to the night for Danny Lauby, who was looking like leading the lead table, but ended up getting battered by Belmont 4-0 himself. Uh, a real turn-up for the books. But in the last match of the night, it's Small trying not to be cut adrift at the bottom of the table. And I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when Chris Mason Looks was like here about the how first. the last game, game of a session is the one you think about the most because it's the most recent in your mind. It'd be interesting to see how Danny Lauby sleeps tonight as a consequence of that 4-0 defeat 67. to Stefan Belmont who kept a clean sheet in that final game of the evening. How is our last game all together tonight going to end up? One with huge consequences for both, as Murph rightly mentions. Jamie Kenning can put himself joint top with a victory here. And been the most 85. consistent player tonight. Been averaging around the 80s throughout. Alex Small. 97. We've seen glimpses, haven't we, of what he can do. Perhaps consistency has been the one thing he's lacked. Well, sorry, Henry, I was just thinking about clean 16. sheets and bedtime and all those kind of things. But yeah, it has been uh, an evening that has been unpredictable. And I think that assessment of lacking consistency could be applied to any of the players tonight. And whoever manages to get it is probably going to be the one that stands on the top of the pile at the end of Wednesday. 140. Everyone's shown signs, mm. but nobody has yet run with the baton. And the man who looked like to do it and your car, 83. Was unceremoniously thrashed 4-0 in the last match of the night. Or his last match of the night. 67. Well, Small leaves 16 after 15 against the darts. Kelling back on 200. And following the start he made to the night, winning his... Opening two matches, he will not want this to peter out. 16. There is a danger that's going to be the leg. case Alex because Small. Alex Small breaks the throw in the opening leg. Lead Kelling by a leg to nil. And as we begin the second leg, I just want you to, to have a look at Alex Small's flights because like on the flights, there is a message on there and it's to do with an autism charity. 92. A worthy cause, raising awareness. Full credit to the young man. 59. It's one thing Darts does very well is charity. Have you seen all the stuff with prostate 100. cancer UK over the years? I know Martin Adams has been a big supporter of that. It's a personal battle for him, and we've seen many battles in the past. Yeah, Johnny Haynes wears a very direct message on his shirt, doesn't he? Always enjoy that one. Yes. 99. It, it leaves us commentators wondering, do we repeat the message or not? It's an important one nonetheless. 100. Would you think this is an important match, more important match for Alex Small? 56. Or for Jamie Kelling? Small is only on two points, only has one win. Without any shadow of doubt, it's got to be Alex Small. Because it'd be four points behind four players, and already he might be playing his way out of contention at this early stage. As you say, it's only one from six, and of course, it's time to turn it around. But you don't want to be fighting fires everywhere you go. And he's done the so called hard bit here, he's got to break a throw in the opening leg. And Kelling has fallen off a cliff tonight. 81. He's lost 94. his last five legs, 4 0 whitewashed defeat in his last match. 
really, 54. this Jimmy one O'Carl 11 would be a real rock 11. stopper for him. Just needs something to get him going. Trouble 17. Would left him a dart at top, but it's just 55. not happening towards Alex the latter end of the evening for Jamie Kelling. Alex Small can take full advantage, he does take full leg. advantage, and it's 2 0 up, and it has to be said. It's been quite serene. It's been quite comfortable for the Welshman so far as he battles to put himself onto four points and two points behind Third the trio at the top. First, game on. Yeah, it's a centenary match was one to forget. And so far, this one will be 100. dumped in room 101. Literally. Kelly just not at it. Alex Small making the most of it. We haven't seen anybody... Produce a, a checkout start of flawless finishing so far this evening, but small is two out of two. Have we agreed to rename that the Usher? 41. Well, th there are f a few that have done it, but Usher was particularly adept in that department, wasn't he? Last time, I really enjoy watching Graham, actually. Abby asked me at the top of the show who 55. the player to watch at the Champions Week was, and he's the one that really impresses me, and he's so good to watch because he plays at this kind of pace as well. 180. And does a lot of that as well. Yeah, he does. He really does. If there's one thing that you won't mind me calling him an old dog, if there's one 85. new trick you could teach the old dog, it is a little bit of counting improvement that could make a lot of difference. 60. Jamie O'Carr, 121. 1-2-1 one, one for Kelling. But again, it comes back to your point earlier about the speedsters. They don't want to stop the rhythm, and sometimes they don't want to stop and think. 97. Alec O'Connor, 95. 95 has been a bit of a number of the evening. Indeed, it has. Well, he could go double double here. Double 19, double top. That's the route. 55. Jamie O'Connor, 24. So Steve Brown do something similar last week. Jamie Kenning then double 12, now double 6. He just needs to get a leg on the board. Gets a leg Game on the board, the and that will give Kelly. him some kind of confidence. But it's Alex Small with the darts here in leg four to open up a 3-1 lead here, putting one away from victory in our final game of the evening. Fourth leg, Alex, to throw first. Game on. 94. As I say, it's a quick turnaround to tomorrow. 9.30 start here. We're going to be back on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Do give us a subscribe on there because we've got plenty of content coming up for you. We're going to be giving you the best bits from our sessions, every session live, and some what shorter content. Maybe some 180s, a little bit like that as well. So do give us a follow across our social media channels for that. 121. Yeah, the debate is raging about that non-dart earlier this evening. 57. At the Motor Super Series Twitter page, you can have your say, get involved, maybe one that we'll uh, discuss again tomorrow morning for those that haven't been watching, I'll haven't made their minds up yet. Has he made his mind up about whether he go for the bull at the end of it? Well, the dart to set up suggests that he might have. Putting one away, and this has been a good performance from Alex Small. 93 average thus far, two from three on the doubles. Game shot on and the he keeps play. up the good Alex doubling Small. stats, getting the doubles within the visit, and that was a nice sporting nod of appeal from Jamie Kenning. Of course, it was a rueful one. He'll be disappointed with his performance thus far, but like Jamie Jamie's a all sporting game. character. He appreciates good darts when he sees it. 14 dart there from Small was met with a nice ripple of applause. Well, this group's going to be tight if Small gets over the line here. It's going to be Gervin, Biowetsky, and Lauby all on six points. Belmont, 97. Kelling, and Small all on four. I would sit on the fence. 85. Well, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, one player, oh, one, only one player gets through. But remember, the other five players get split 92. into the other groups, so they're going to be close groups because we've got such an evenly matched Group A this week that it's going to be very 24. difficult to split them, even on Thursday and Friday. Of course, there's advantages to finishing second and first. So if you cannot 96. win the group, you must get in the top three to give yourself the better opportunity of aggressing through to the finals. 100. Of course, we saw Moreno Blome get to the semi-finals from Group C after 
finishing bottom of group A. And Kieran T had win at week from bottom of group A. But the three from five in group B is much more favourable for you. And the night could end with a big victory for Alex Small as he wants 76 now. Double eight. Two fours. Oh, and it's bounced down the double. Jamie O'Carr, 124. Can you believe it? And if this one, two, four goes, then I would have seen it all. So double four. He's already hit it once. He's not going to hit it again. Madhouse. Game shot on the match. And Alex Small gets himself on to four points. And there is a two-way split in terms of this group A table overnight. Three players on six, three players on four, courtesy of that victory from Alex Small as he beats Jamie Kelling by four legs to one. Let's have a quick wrap up then of our final match of our first ever evening group A session here at the Super Series. A 90.18 average for Small, two 180s to his name, three 140 pluses, four from 10 on the checkouts. His high checkout was 40. Jamie Kelling had a really good start to the night, but then it just dovetailed as the evening went on. He's only got a couple of hours now to rest and recuperate and get ready for the morning session tomorrow at half past nine. But let's round up all the action then. Let's head up to the balcony. Chris Murphy's up there alongside Abigail Davis. Yeah, thank you very much. Honestly, what a night of action we have just witnessed. And probably those two last results really summing up what we've witnessed because it's been such an unpredictable night of action. Yeah, it's just it's kept looking like somebody was about to just take the initiative and pull away. We thought it might be Danny Lowby. Then he gets thrashed in his penultimate match, in his last match, sorry. And then the last result as well, uh, Alex Small winning for the second time tonight. Two players winning for the second time tonight in the last match. It's going to be so close going into tomorrow and Wednesday. And Stefan Belmont as well, a quick word on him because we've seen, you know, earlier on in the night, we were saying we've not really seen him produce as we know he can. But in that last match, there were certainly signs, weren't there? And we're going to, as you discussed that, we're going to take a little look at the table as well so we can see where these players are positioned. Yeah, so Stefan Belmont, we, we were kind of joking in commentary earlier this evening that it was kind of the, the tortoise in the group um, and it's kind of slow and steady has kind of won the race yet yeah, there are three players above him in the table but three players on six three players on four as well there is one kind of cut off the screen there in sixth position but yet yeah, it's just ridiculously close and I, I'd, I said it earlier on tonight I don't think that we've really learned an awful lot about who's most likely to progress from this group I agree. We've not learnt a lot, and I don't think we've seen the best from the players who we maybe thought were going to do the most in this group. Yes, Nathan Govan, who sits top, he's produced some moments of brilliance, especially at the back end of legs. Biowetsky, we've seen moments, but he's not really brought his A game so far, has he? No, not at all, and he's been involved in a couple of close ones as well, and that we've seen last week that the leg difference really can come into play and can make a huge difference in... Not only who tops the group, but who ends up going into Group B and the advantages that come with that that Henry was talking about during that last match. So I think we have got more to come from all of the players. And if one player has that day tomorrow like Conor Hinehan had last week, I think they will be the one that then goes on and, and wins this group because it's likely that you just keep getting everybody beating everybody. One final question then. If you were to pick that one player who could have that day tomorrow, who are you going to pick it to if be? If you asked it me half an hour ago I probably would have said Danny Lowby but I think I'm now going to go with Nathan Gervin and that really is a reflection of how this evening has gone there's been so much drama so much tension let's do it all again tomorrow morning shall we will be back on your screens at 9 30 a.m for the second day of action from group a we'll see you then